Warning, the Dub Talk podcast contains strong language and content that's not suitable for younger audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Also, there will be spoilers for Zombieland Saga up to episode 4. Yes, we know by episode 8. If you've got a problem with that, there's the door. There's also other references to anime as well as movies and music in general. So, please be careful if there's a piece of media you haven't listened to yet. The views and opinions expressed are those of the individual participants in tonight's episode and do not reflect the Dub Talk podcast as a whole. And finally, as a reminder, idol culture can be very dangerous, very criminal. If you adopt the I'll sleep when I'm dead mentality, chances are you'll be waking back up from the grave very soon. Just remember, you're not a rice, you're a dead. Or you're undead. So, take that if you will. Yeah, just keep on dancing and singing till your arms fall off. Literally. What am I doing matching a group of dead idols? What, what, what is my purpose in life? Like, uh, anyway, anyway, sit back and enjoy the show. Audience, how are you doing this evening? Welcome to our brand new episode of Dub Talk, a uh, wonderful musical extravaganza that doesn't feature the undead. Who told you that? That's not true. Get, get, get behind the curtain, get behind the curtain. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Pay no attention to them. Uh, but uh, welcome to your coming, dear, dear, on this wonderful evening where we shall be discussing a brand new English language dub of a wonderful anime series known as Zombieland Saga. Now you might be thinking, why would they make an anime of that old movie Zombieland? To which I respond, don't be a smartass. You know exactly what it's about. But he's about. not that old! <laughs> I know that. Megan, don't you know by this point that anything that is more than five years old is automatically ready for the retirement home? According to some people on a Discord, Maiden Abyss is a fossil. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't speak of those people. They're not trustworthy. Uh, but uh, I, it is not just me who is here to talk about this English dub. We of course have my uh, wonderful assistants here to help me out. We have Megan. Hey, I got the Twinkies. When are we going to Bill Murray's house? <laughs> we have Noah. Cause this is thriller, thriller now. Ah. And we have Jamal. When I said hip hop was dead, he meant hip hop was undead. <laughs> wow. And for our next musical act, Tupac. <laughs> California love. Hold on, let's let's uh, let's let's like bring up the hologram rig. California. And for my next act, knows how to party. <laughs> Finally, Tupac and Miku can be reunited as they were always meant to be. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tu- I'm sorry. I don't ship Miku X Tupac. I ship Miku X Freddie Mercury. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> we have fun here. Do we're going to reference nothing but dis- beloved deceased artists the entire night. I mean, that would be appropriate given the topic of conversation. In that case, I'd like to pour one out for Murdoch from the Gorillas. May he rest in hell. He's not dead. He was just in jail. <laughs> so why difference. did they replace him with Ace from the Powerpuff Girls? Because he he's in jail. jail. What's the difference? Jail, hell. What's the difference? He I'd like to pour out. one out. I'd like to pour one out for Kanye's dignity. <laughs> no, no, you get that I'll, back. I'll, there right pull, now. I'll pour one out with you too, Megan. Alas, Kanye's dignity, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> I, li- I like to pull one out for R. Kelly's career. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man. Say, Jamal, are you giving him a golden shower? Said no. No, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Megan, we had strict orders from the NDA agreement said that we were going to keep this respectable for the whole episode, and you broke it in the first two minutes. <laughs> we nope. dug up dead bodies. How are we respectable? At, at the very least, make sure that you, you know, say, okay, you guys were awesome, and we're not going to bring up the things that 
we'd rather you not remember remember us for. Oh boy. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Anyway, you might be asking yourself, what is this Zombie Land saga? I saw that trailer. It told me nothing. Well, allow me to uh, allow me to explain. Zombie Land saga is the touching tale of our protagonist, whose name I have here somewhere. Sakura. Thank you. <laughs> our protagonist Sakura, who is a who dreams of becoming an idol one day, but sadly those dreams come to a shuddering halt when, upon leaving her house one morning, she is hit by a truck and killed. And remember, folks, the meat is more street when it's flattened on the street. <laughs> Holy shit! I was gonna say, what? what I watched, I watched Love Live once. Oh. Anyways, uh. However, this is not the end of Sakura's story. She soon finds herself in a strange mansion filled with zombified girls. Fleeing in terror, she encounters a policeman and discovers that she too is a zombie. They have all in fact been resurrected by uh, this man, uh, Kataro, who is now their manager, who has decided that he is going to form an idol group to save his prefecture, Saga. Which, if you don't know, is in like the lower left-hand corner of Japan. It's like very old. And used to be a very big deal, but not much has happened there in the last couple decades or so. Uh, but but what, there's, there's no politics in the show at all, right? Like, Because as we all know, anime doesn't have anything political in it. I'm going to be not, real not, with uh, you, 57th Prime Minister of Japan, <laughs> Shinzo Abe. Oh. This ain't solving the declining birth rate. <laughs> I don't care how you want me to put my Franks in the darling. That ain't cutting it, Chief. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, this uh, sounds like a fun... No, sir, I'm not intro. going to make a star child with my cousin. <laughs> my Morgan. sister, my restraining order, sir. Ma Megan, Megan, we, we, we have um, I, I, we have a three-hour script here to get through. Just stick to the script. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's better. Three hours of ah. Uh, will will our will our idol group succeed? Will they fail miserably? Will they eventually turn on their manager and rip to shreds, as all evil people in zombie movies and inevitably end up? I, I really don't know. To be honest, the show could really go anywhere at this point. We we have theories, and we'll get to those throughout this episode. We'll get to them. So so uh, what what licensing studio decided to bring this to the Western world? Media uh, Blasters! No. This is Speaking of dead studios. Game. I mean, this would, this would be something Media Blasters would pick up, but no, it is not Media Blasters. This is, in fact, Funimation, who's bringing us this wonderful, wonderful uh, sound up for our enjoyment. I, I'm sorry, uh, I really can't imagine Media Blasters licensing this. All right, all right, not... Look, there's a much trashier, grindhousier version of this concept that Media Blasters would definitely license. Yes, exactly. Not, not this one, but, like... Zombie the porn musical. parody. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is th yeah, this is too pure for um for our fine folks at Media Blasters. They Although wouldn't I, I they would wouldn't they wouldn't dub Zombie Land Saga, but they would totally dub Zombie Fuck Saga. <laughs> and again, we're just wrong, digging man. ourselves deeper and deeper. <laughs> Bring I on was the show. Say no, something, no, but no, I'm no, just we're... gonna walk away from that. No, 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 no get, get back here. Jamal, come back here. Come on, back into the pit with us. When come on. you walk away, you no. don't hear me, me say, please, no, no, please. Oh, oh, baby, don't go. No. I'm on, boss, boss. I, I would like permission uh, to, to sing throughout this episode, too. I, I think we need to have permission for this. Y'all simmer down. <laughs> I'm, try, try, I'm trying to wrangle the reins away from them, folks. It's very difficult. There's three of them. Uh, uh, there's three of us and one of him. We can eat his brains and split them evenly. Ah. You don't want. You don't. You don't want to do that. Uh, that's, that's, I, I don't know. I, I mean, don't. it's better than if we had to feed on Andrew. Womp womp. Okay, and that's in our tally on the chalkboard. <laughs> yeah, right, we we, we filled fill our quota for Andrew Zingers. One hundred and twenty-five consecutive episodes of dunking on Andrew. Good job, Megan. Really? Yeah. Go back every single one. Have of you them. literally been counting? Do you have any idea what I do with my spare time? <laughs> well, you have well, two children. And white like, hands. Okay, let's not break that up. And that is 110 straight episodes of Dunking on Noah. Good job. 
You you do it to yourself. I didn't say I didn't. I'm just saying that it happens. True. Okay. I'm on. I'm sorry. Take your reins. That's fine. Where was I? People made this dub. We should talk about that. We should. Now, so, the question, so, though, did anyone make predictions? I did. Yes. So, to start off, we're going to talk about the ADR director and the script writer. So, uh, Megan, why don't you start us off, you, since you have some predictions for them. Who did you predict? So, uh, while I was browsing Twitter, as I do, because I have no life, um, I saw that a actor had said, uh, man, Mamoru Miyano is a treasure. If you've never watched Zombieland Saga in Japanese, or ever watched one of the previews of this, Kotaro is literally just Mamoru Miyano. <laughs> and if you don't know who Mamoru Miyano is, you, just, you do. Just, just go to Google. You, you just do. Just go to Google. He is a part of all of us. Yeah. Inside every person lives a tiny shred of Mamoru Miyano. <laughs> we don't know how to get it out. It's actually a plague virus. Send help. To, to, um, give you an, to give you an idea of what Mamoru Miyano is like, for promotion for this show, he dressed up as his character, and he looks exactly like his character. Yeah, yep. like, they legitimately just modeled the character off of him. Like, it is, it, is, it, is, it is identical. He wears yeah, his like, sunglasses at night just because he can. So I can, so I can see. Corey Hart, so what are you doing here? You're not dead. <laughs> but his career might as well be. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> No, uh, somebody without a dead career who I uh, who tweeted that was actually Caitlin Glass. Mm. So I figured if she was working on something with uh, Mamoru Miyano in it, um, it would be this. I didn't know if he was in another show that she was going to be working on. And then usually when Caitlin Glass write, uh, wrote an idol, directed an idol show, uh, her writer was Kristen McGuire. So I figured, hey, that would be um, a good team up. My second prediction was actually Jade Saxton, because Jade uh, Jade worked on Kakarillo the last two seasons, and I figured if she was going to be on anything, it was either going to be this, or she was going to be on fucking Goblin Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. my other writer who I thought if... Because she also had worked with Caitlyn, so it could have been either or these people. My second writer pick was actually Caitlyn Barr. Mm -hmm. uh, because they had worked together on Free, and um, once I knew what Zombieland Saga was about, which was a mix of idol and horror, hey, Caitlyn Barr wrote Angels of Death. That was fun. <laughs> Come at me, you little necrophiliac. <laughs> As we all know, Zombieland Saga is Eddie from Angels of Death's favorite anime. That does make sense. So, but those were my predictions. All right, excellent. Uh, Noah, did you have any predictions? I did, and I'm afraid that, um, was it a lazy prediction? Yes, it was, but I still put Caitlin Glass as the ADR director, and it has nothing to do with the fact that she's directed a good handful of shows about musicals like uh, Love Life Sunshine or Fuka or Show by Rock. No, 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 not at all connected to that. I, I just picked her at random, decided to put her in there. Don't nothing sue me. Don't Nothing see. to do with past experience at all. It's not like... A, once you get a director or a person that you think is going to be casting a role in your head, it's kind of hard to think anything else, even if you know that it's the easiest prediction that you could possibly make. Um, I did get a little more ambitious with my scriptwriter prediction, because, um, like uh, Megan said, um, a lot of times Caitlin works with uh, Chris McGuire with writing, but I didn't think Kristen for the writer. I actually thought Bonnie Clinkenbeard would be a good fit for the show, because the show is... Uh, first and foremost, I know it's a mix of idol and horror, but I view it more as a comedy more than anything else. And a lot of shows that Bonnie's done, like uh, Yuri on Ice, uh, Space Patrol Luluco, and uh, My Bride is a Mermaid, seem to have a good balance of the serious and the funny moments together, which, I mean, the show's about dead people while also being about entertaining with the power of music. So there, there seemed like a, a tightrope walk there that I know Bonnie's good at. Mm. Makes sense. Uh, Jamal, did you have any predictions? Uh, yes, I did. I uh, three for three. I also had Kate the Glass because yeah. nine, nine times out of ten, whenever there's a show that involves singing or so, Kate Caitlin will always tend to gravitate towards that. And I, I also had a uh, Jade Saxon because with Jade, she likes to direct shows that have like kind of either sincerity like Tokyo Rabu Hanamaru or spontaneity like. High school DXD hero. Uh, f 
I also had two assistant directors on the off chance that Hardy's little tinfoil hat prediction comes true. They do put this on Toonami. I had Don, <laughs> I had Don Brenda in case like they decide to do songs later on down the line because she helped direct the songs for Pop Team Epic. I learned. I also had Terry Doty because zombies. <laughs> but, 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 but she is a pretty good director in her own right. Uh, script writer, I had Emily Neves because Emily tends to stay faithful. And, I mean, she only makes slight deviations if it works for the better. And Kristen McGuire because I know she's a very capable script writer. And because there's no source material to go off of, she could take this any way she wants to. I see. Uh, sidebar for a minute. God, please let this get on Toonami. Okay. Yeah, people, really. People will flip out so hard, and I will be so happy. There is okay. There's tin foil hat theories, and then there's there's like copper pot on your head connected to a radio antenna theories here. I can Listen dream, here. I, can dream. I will send Jason DeMarco money. If that actually happens, I will eat my hat. But. <laughs> You better. I will, I will literally just go to Atlanta and cry in front of his office door until they arrest me. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Megan, if you could get Sentai to dub Tanakun, Tanaka-kun, then I guess you can get anything to happen at this point. At this point, I literally complained to Sentai, hey, dub all the shit with cute boys, and look what happens. <laughs> Megan, you, you we need to use your power for good. But, uh, uh, so, uh, Amon, hey. Amon, did you predict make predictions for the show? I did. Uh, uh, surprise, surprise, I also predicted Caitlin Glass. What? For pretty much the same reason everyone else talked about. Is it she's, amazing? She, 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 she's the musical lady in Funimation. It's a very obvious choice. Isn't it amazing? Um, you know, she, she's got the chops for it. She's, you know, she's done this behind, you know, she's done this as director. She's been in musical anime as an actress and so on and so on. It seemed like a good bet. Uh, for writer, I initially thought... That Caitlin Glass popped in my mind as maybe also writer, but then it occurred to me that you don't get a lot of director writer uh, double ups in simul dubbing for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I imagine the workload is like way too much at that point. Uh, so instead, I, I also thought Caitlin Barr would be a good guess for the same reason of like she did Angel of Death, which is also a weird like horror comedy thing, and it seemed like something that would uh, fit her style very well. Uh, so uh, obviously, out... everybody guessed Caitlin Glass, so that was who the director was, right? No. What? No. What? No. Ding dong! I was right! <laughs> so was yes. I! Yes, yes, in fact. Uh, for ADR director on uh, Zombieland Saga, we have Jade Saxton. Mm. Uh, and uh, she's also being assisted uh, so far. She's been assisted um, on ADR direction by Tia Ballard. And Felicia Angel helped out on episode three. Uh, and in addition, ADR script writing was done by Caitlin Barr. So Yay! Look at right me go! There as well. Uh, so, uh, let's, uh, let's get started. What do we guys think about the, uh, overall direction writing on the dub? Megan, if you'd start us off. Okay, cool, because I got this right. Um, yeah, yeah, no, you go, you get bragging rights, you go first. So, no, this is a really solid, funny fucking show, and it has a really fun dub. I think that while this show has a lot of actors, um, who are really well-known overall, I think actually uh, all of them have been in some sort of idol or music anime uh, at some point in time in their careers. I think that there are a couple of obvious choice ones where they went, because I got one of the girls right for very obvious reasons, and I'll talk about it when I do my predictions. Um, I love all of them. They bring so much personality to their performances. And I think the reason why is that they have such a solid script under them. Caitlin Barr's knack for comedy and horror is so precise that it's almost scary. And she's becoming quickly, like, one of the best writers at Funimation. She is... She's worked on a lot of things I absolutely adored this year. Um... But the one thing I did kind of want to talk about that I don't think that they have a lot of control and I see a lot of people are being super critical about about the dub is that they haven't dubbed the songs. To which, guys, the actors and the writers don't have control over that. Neither mm -hmm. does the director. 
And I would Leave them alone. <laughs> I would kind of understand people's upsetness about this if this was the first time that this was happening, but it's But been, it's not. It's yeah. not. We've seen this in Show by Rock. We saw this in Fuko. We saw this in probably Love Life Sunshine too, right? Love Life Sunshine, they will never be dubbing the music for. Yeah, so Like that ship has that ship has sailed and will never come back. It is the SSN in the original Pokemon games. Okay. Um, okay. Wow, wow, Let, wow. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's a rule of thumb for you. If it's an opening, an ending, or an insert song, it will not be dubbed right away, if at all. Oh. Mm -hmm. Like, there are obvious exceptions to this rule. Like, they did dub some of the- there's, like, a couple songs in Yamato that they did. Um, I think they went back and did- they did the music for Pop Team, which was really weird, but Pop Team was a really strange license in itself. Um, I think they went back. They did the music in Anime Gatteries. They did go back and dub the idol song in Anime Gatteries. Uh, Dave confirmed that himself. But like, not during the original broadcast. Original, not during the broadcast because they don't have the time. Yeah, I got and it. that's well, what that's what Caitlin said. And honestly, my thing is this: if they don't do it, it's it's a legal thing, and that's it sucks. And I understand because there are genuinely people who who don't understand, who cannot read and are blind and don't understand the songs. But half the time, idol songs aren't actually conclusive to the actual plot. <laughs> exactly. This is a true Like, fact. you not... don't need to know the lyrics to the Love Live song. It's not affecting the actual plot of the fucking show. Like, true. In this case, I think the rap battle in episode two, I can see why a lot of people wanted that dub because it actually kind of is plot relevant. That is, or at yeah. least character, wanted... character development wise. But it's not a reason for you to go be an asshole to people. Mm -hmm. Like occasionally an idol song or an insert song will be like tangentially related to the theme, but it's not like a Disney song where it's supposed to advance the plot at the same time. Yeah. Unless you review Starlight. That, um, that, but, and, but even then, that's kind of up. That's for the an day. exception to the rule. Yeah, and, and I and I would just point out, like, even if like even if you know eventually they're going to get the rights, you consider in order to adapt these things, they need to get the original lyrics, translate them, rework the lyrics so they fit the vocal melody of the song, get the clean version of the backing track, yeah. arrange all that, have the singers learn them, and then record them. That is a long process, and match them to the lip flaps. Exactly. Exactly. That a, that's that's a long ass process in of itself, and expecting them to be able to do yeah. that on a simul dub schedule, it's a, like it's not going to unless it's like very short and something very simple, like something that is like literally like twenty seconds long. That's not going to happen. It's but like not, an entire rap battle. Yeah. By the way, a rap battle that Kotaro beatboxes to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, guys, if you think Sega does hard rap, it's much harder, too, because you have to freestyle the lyrics. Like, there are so many bars that you have to match that it's not... It, Sega is not easy for people. Rap is not easy, much easier at all. And Caitlyn Barr is only just a script writer. She's not a lyricist, guys, so stop giving her crap about this. Yeah. So yeah. The also, point me, I'd like to point out that they did a lot of times. Funimation actually has gone back and dub songs when they can. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not. I I own Dance with Devils. Guess what's dubbed in that? The All the music. Oh wow. And, and plus, all of yes. the songs are dubbed. Yes. Like I think they went and did it in Concrete Revolutio. It's just a, it's. It's we have an image on the Funimation Discord that just says because legal stuff is weird, mm -hmm. and has a nice picture of Phoenix right on it. Like, <laughs> nice. like guys, I understand you're upset, but that's not a reason to trash the entire dub because this dub is really fucking good. And if you are a dub only watcher and you're going to skip this. Because of that one thing, you are shooting yourself in the foot. Like, you are just lining that gun up and shooting. And, like, if you... And I understand, there are genuinely people who are blind and cannot read who I can completely understand that for. So, but there are also people who, who aren't and are just being dicks. Those are the people that we're addressing here. We are addressing the dicks out there who think Yeah, we are addressing the assholes the out there. To talk to people who are actually on the staff. You, you have a Twitter or send them a PM or anything that you can. 
because you feel entitled to get what you want out of this, even though you clearly don't understand the legal process to all this. We've explained it to you. We'll probably have to explain it again in the future. Please don't make us do it again, though. Yeah, like, guys, if you want, I could I could literally go through and count shows where they dub the singing in, and don't make me do it. Um, don't make me go there. So but I'm, back I'm, onto more of Jade and, and Caitlyn. They, do, they make a really great team, and Tia stepping in to help Jade out is... They're they're like a, a directing duo basically. <laughs> yep. Cuz I think they did Kakarillo together and they I did. think uh other show they've done a couple other shows together but uh overall it's really solid and I really like what they've started with. Noah I think you were next. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know how I'm going to be able to follow that up there. I feel like I just got schooled in anime lyrics licensing 101. <laughs> Just st- talk about the show. You guys also helped me make my point. So That's a good point. I, I just feel like, no, no, I feel like that one part in episode two where, <laughs> where Sakura just drops the mic. He just dropped the mic. But, but back on topic here. The, um, the route of this whole show, like I said uh, at the top, was that it's uh, mostly a comedy. There are horror elements in it, but they, they don't, it's more of a Shaun of the Dead thing than Dawn of the Dead so if, if zombies are like a turnoff to you because you're scared of them, you don't have to worry. The show is not going to play up the, um, uh, I, I, I forgot the name of like a famous zombie director guy. Amon, help me out here. George Romero. James Romero. Char- who has a character in this show named after him? Yes, he does. I'm sorry. I'm ashamed of myself. But yes, that, <laughs> that guy. This isn't like that. This is an idol show with some elements of horror tinged in there. So as far as like, how are you going to direct this? Um, honestly, I thought it was going to be a lot sillier and maybe a little more over the top than what we actually got, because, um, my first impression of episode one, where there are a lot of funny moments, um, mostly tied into the animation, not so much the voice acting, Jade actually directs the English voice actors to be more serious than, um, than I guess I was expecting, at least compared to the Japanese. Um, she's trying to get to the heart, it seems like, no pun intended, of these zombies, and that's that was a smart choice because as the show goes on because we're up to episode four so far in the dub there's a lot of emotions there's a lot of feels that the characters go through that uh would be a little um would feel very hollow if they played up just the comedic moments and they tried to have everyone talk in a goofy manner so i i am glad that jade did that like she leaned more towards the emotional parts than the comedic parts which is not to say that the comedic parts aren't funny which brings me around to caitlin because Oh my god, thank you, Caitlin, for finding fun little ways to make sure that puns got kept in the dialogue. Like, uh, there's one part where um, Kataro is saying, like, like um, heads up! Or, because one of the characters lost their head. Or he's saying, mentioning, like, when you had a heartbeat. And lots of, like, tiny little portions of it that are pretty perfectly retained from the Japanese into the English. There's, like, a rapping police scene. There's this part where there's a mix-up about... Um, uh, was it where uh, like uh, Sakura gets bitch slapped hard because there's a misunderstanding about what she's saying? Those are all really funny scenes that Caitlin writes in really well to the dialogue. So there, there's a lot of good stuff going on so far. It may not be like uh, the most uh, gut busting kind of comedy that some people are used to, but there's a good balance of both emotions and humor here that is really well worth the listen, especially if you're contemplating if you're going to watch English or Japanese. I can recommend the English based on how Jade and Caitlin handled this so far. Oh, come on. What's not funny about watching a girl get the full Hiyori treatment in episode within two minutes of episode one starting? <laughs> it, 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 like I was telling you guys at the beginning, I knew what was coming. I knew what was coming in episode one. I knew she was going to get she was going to get killed or hit by a car or something. But it was still funny, regardless of how it happened. It, it was really I funny. I think the funnier thing is just, like, the sequence of her falling down to the ground takes forever. <laughs> and it's just punctuated by death metal screaming. Yeah, that, that was a good way it's to start. To really, it kind of gave you a sense of what the show is going to be like. Um, the, the only... Oh, sorry. One last thing I did want to say was, as far as the animation's uh, comedic moments, I don't know if this was a direct inspiration, but they seem to have taken a few pages from Chuck Jones in terms of how to make things funny. Because Chuck Jones was famous for taking the most minuscule movements and getting big laughs out of it. And there's quite a few of those scenes throughout the show. Like, the first episode, you got Sakura in a cage with a bunch of other zombies, and she's not moving a whole lot. You just see her eyes kind of darting around while she's got, like, this open-mouth look on her, and that's really, really funny. So 
props to Mappa for being able to take minuscule animation and get big laughs out of it. Indeed. Uh, Jamal. Okay, so when I started watching this show and I saw the cast this, uh, minus three characters, it looked like it was going to be a pretty safe list to me. And then I started listening to the dub, I was like, holy fucking shit. I'm like, did Jade massage your vocal cords or something? Because, I, these actors have played the characters in ways I never thought they'd expect. Like, well, when we get to the select few, I'll explain, but I... Jane really knows how to draw an essence out of an actor. Like, I don't know, I guess being behind the glass, you know, she's had a few, of course she's had a few experiences herself, but she manages to relate those and she knows what she's looking for. I mean, I've seen that in a lot of other dubs. To which, Caitlin Barr is a writer. Caitlin Barr is a very strong writer. She manages to combine comedy with the supernatural and the unnatural. I mean, just like she did he Hidematsui, like, she took s some of the simple touches that were in there and made them unique, like, uh, in episode four, I think, when Kotovo's driving off into this, to go sightseeing, he says the sights are not gonna see themselves, but what I really found funny upon rewatch, in episode three, when Saki is talking to police officer, she says, you'll never take me alive, and I thought... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Saki's a treasure. There's so, really there's, is. There are so many little. Mo they play around with the I'm dead. Part. I'm really, I'm really happy, and I didn't mention this in my part. Uh, when he says Wikipedia, they kept the bleeping noises. Yes. In. Yep. 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 Yes, Wikipedia they did. Is a brand Wikipedia! that we can't mention now. <laughs> or like, uh, there's like a thing I think one time where uh, where Kotaro, uh hits, and this just speaks to how how good the show is like just put together. Uh, he hits the, the chalkboard that's always with them, and it's upside down. And then he hits it back and he fixes it. <laughs> like, there's a lot of little shit like that. And there's... I've read about some stuff that comes up in episode... Like, later episodes. There's something in episode 7 that's just gonna shock us, if you know what I mean. I haven't seen episode 7 yet, but I wanna know about episode 5, though. Oh, oh god, the previews fucking were, like, I just saw chicken suits, and I was like, oh lord, there is we're going one, to Raisin Cane's. What? There is one <laughs> line, I, there's one line, I, I am willing this to you, Caitlin Bond, I, I know you can't hear me right now, but I'm telepathically sending this to you. I'm just hoping I get a clunky head out of this. <laughs> that, that'll what? make your, that'll make your life, Jamal, that, that, I, it, I'll, when you see episode 5, you will understand what I mean. That's all I'm going to say for right now. All I know is, bravo, ladies. Bravo. Chicken suits. What? Don't don't think about it too hard, Noah. Just lie back and accept it It's too it late. I've already got a huge master thesis on this show. i, I got to add chicken suits. Hold on a second. I got to write chicken All right. Well, you're, you're, you're talking about that. I'll get my thoughts on the dub, uh, which is that it's, it, it's really good. <laughs> Oh no, there's oh no, he's turned into a chicken. That's very unfortunate. No, this is a really well done dub. I I'm enjoying the show a lot. Um I think in it is in the Japanese this felt like a very like wild out there comedy, the of the kind I I usually enjoy, and I thought the dub has done a wonderful job of capturing that, but also making it its own. This is a this is a nice like it's not like super adaptive. It generally keeps like the same tone, the same uh, content for the most part, but it feels very, it feels very, like, true. It's distinct enough that it feels like its own creation, and I really appreciate that. Um, like, the direction has been really good, just in general. Uh, everybody's, like, very funny. The writing is hysterical. I also want to give a brief shout-out. Uh, we're not going to talk about him here, because he hasn't, he hasn't done much as of episode four, but the, oh. uh, cop played by Austin Tyndall, who shows up periodically... <laughs> And oh God! Bless Austin much. Tindall for the rap. Cop, <laughs> yeah, he uh, he he gets a cop rock moment in episode two. Oh where, uh, my God! There's a there's a there's a bunch of delinquents <laughs> rapping in an alley, and uh, he shows up to hassle them by continuing their freestyle. Oh my God! I just and remember you better bail or else you go to jail. I I'm on, I'm on. I just remember something. I haven't heard him rap like that since. Is this a zombie of the dead? <laughs> 
It's really funny because I had a moment in episode three where uh, the cop gets into Sakura's face and he's like, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Meanwhile, in the back of my mind, Oshiete! I was like, motherfucker, that's Choken! <laughs> oh. Flashbacks in Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah, it's and also also like a lot of the bit characters are very well cast. I think we we also wanted to highlight um, Mike McFarlane's yeah. Metalocalypse character. Yeah, exactly. and his his other like punk friend who shows up with him, who's played by Chris George. Yeah, Chris George. And just they're just they're very funny, and they don't do a lot, but they're just very funny whenever they're on screen. It's it's this is a, this is a show that just it, there's just so much care and passion on the Japanese side and on the English side, it's, it's almost heartwarming. It's like, so much so much love has been put in this ridiculous nonsense, and I, for one, am very happy that they're all willing to go above and beyond for this silliness. It makes me very happy. Well, Bravo, that's what, guys. Well, that's I, I what could... you get with a J-Tax to dub. Exactly. I could be wrong, Amon, but I believe <laughs> that Mike also used that same voice for the next episode previews for Beck, Mongolian, Chop Squad. So he, he basically all had to do was just dust this off and pull it out <laughs> of the closet. Hey Mike, give her that voice juice for Beck. Uh, yeah, can you do that again? We have a we have a metal head. We need to we need to pop in for a few minutes. Oh, yeah, sure, Apparently, Robert. I think Mike McFarland is an actual metal head. I mean, he probably yeah, is. The, oh, yeah. Cause, yeah, he's a guitar. No, he is because I remember I watched the Noragami OV, uh, the Noragami commentaries, and it's like one with him and Ian, uh, him Ian, uh, I think Alexis and Micah. And I remember they were asking what they were like in high school, and Mike said, well, in high school, I just wore a different band shirt every day. Aw, Mike was me in high school. Aww. Aww. My favorite thing was Ian Sinclair was, like, I think Ian Sinclair went to a high school where they all had to wear uniforms unless you were a senior. So for a senior year of high school, he kept coming in in really nice clothes the entire year. That, sounds like it could be, that rule sounds like it could be abused horribly by the senior class. Oh, like if you if you own Noragami, I think it's the episode nine commentary where they talk about it, which also gives me one of my favorite lines of uh from Micah in a commentary ever. So Micah, what's it like growing up in Hawaii? Well, every day I walked my pet volcano to school. <laughs> oh, I remember that. <laughs> and, and we broke it about. Amon has turned into a zombie, folks, so... Like, that was one of the best, like... That was, like, one of the best sarcastic comments I'd ever heard in an anime. And the other Noragami commentary is great because it's just Brynn and Elizabeth Maxwell losing their minds. <sighs> and there's a part where it's like, he went from... He went from uh, Aslan to Scar. <laughs> it's about one of my favorite shit posts of all time. Anyway, go ahead. Um... Are you alive yeah, again? No. Are you okay, uh, I'm, 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 I'm alright. I have cough drops. Um, yeah, no, this this is just a really well done dub. I'm 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 really enjoying this show. I'm really enjoying this dub. It is it has been a complete knockout on all fronts so far. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, are we ready to move on? Yes. All right. Holy shit! This is gonna be a long episode. Yeah. Well, we're uh... only two episodes, two hours in. I I don't think it's gonna take that much longer. <laughs> you hush. Anyways. On to our, on to our, <coughs> on to our first cast members. We have uh, two members of our, uh, uh, what's their name? Fran, 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 Fran Chu Chu. Thank you. Fran, Fran Chu Chu. Or Fran Chu Chu. Which is, which is a noise Tay makes, but they decide is really cute. Or, or as Kotaro calls him, Fran Chu Chu Chu. <laughs> that will be part of episode four. It's like, if this guy wasn't already on the list to be eaten by the zombies, he just made it. Mm -hmm. That's like my favorite fan theory is that like by the end of the show they're gonna eat him. I buy that. And then Noah's Noah's the I like Noah's also theory, but it, if it turns out to be right, I owe him twenty bucks. Yeah, my theory <laughs> is that it, it. I don't quite know how the physics of this world works at all, but uh, we said okay, he's gonna get turned into a zombie by the end of the episode or by the show. And I said. He's already a zombie, isn't he? He's just using the makeup to hide his skin really well, and that's why he's bothering with these zombie girls, because he's one of them, too. And if that, if that turns out to be true by the end of the show, one, I'm getting checked into the psychic's lab, and two, I get 20 bucks from Megan. I, I, I'm enjoying that the anime this season that has got everybody, like, talk, sitting around the water cooler discussing theories like it's Twin Peaks or something is the zombie musical. That really, that really delights me. What's a water cooler? 
you you What's work in an, you, you work in an office. You know what that is. We have we are high tech. Okay, we have water fountains and we have those high tech kinds where you just stick your bottle under it and it dispenses directly into the bottle. Yeah, we I got had, a rock. I had one of those in college. <laughs> Anywho, we have uh, two 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 members of Front Chuchu. We have Yugiri, who is a Meiji era courtesan. And we also have uh, Lily Hoshikawa, who is a child actress. I think I think it's supposed to be in kind of like the 2000s. Uh, uh, Lily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't actually it doesn't actually say where she's from. She's just a child actress. Yeah, she's just a child. I, lo I looked up something online that had like a birth and death date, but I have no idea if that's actually a birth true. and death. Date. <laughs> nice. She's dead. You, she's no, a zombie. I, she had to die. Really, no, this this is the natural progression. Okay, because otaku are big fans of the birthday of their fictional characters but this is double for your money because not only you get to celebrate their birthday you get to celebrate their death date too that's two for the price of one I, I look happy death day i got you some flowers I, I look forward to this new morbid direction of otaku fandom this is this is great this is like every character now every fictional character we're has moving to have a from we're moving day. from sadism to morbidity <laughs> this is how we're dealing with the inevitability of our own mortality. Oh wait, there are actually official death dates for these characters. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, Amon, we're getting way off topic Holy here. Holy shit, you're actually right, Amon. It's horrifying, isn't it? No, because Lily died on November 30th. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh dear. <sighs> well... So. How, how do, do we? we do, uh, do you have any let's, predictions, Megan? Let's just, yeah, let's just go. Megan, do you have do you have any predictions for these two characters? Yes, I do. So for Lily, because I did part of this based off the first episode and part of it off looks, um, and I tried to go with people who I know who had either either been in an idol anime or a musical anime, or I could see being in them. Uh, so for Lily, because she reminded me a little bit of uh, Ruby from Love Live Sunshine, I had. Uh, Sarah Wiedenhoff, oh, okay, and then yeah. I also had Kristen McGuire because I've never seen Kristen McGuire play like a super tiny girl character that I remember, and I figured, hey, she could do it. And for uh, for Yugiri, I had Brina Palencia or Michaela Krantz because I figured if she was a courtesan, she was a little older and that she would have a little bit more of a deeper voice. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if she was actually still a teenager or like an actual adult. It's dead I'm clear. Anime I mean, we, have, we have those birth and death dates now. We can figure out how old she was when she died. <laughs> She's 19. She's 19, by the way. Oh, uh, that's weird now. Okay. Oh, and she'll always wow. be 19. <laughs> she will never not be 19. <laughs> oh, boy. World's, she's the new world's oldest teenager. Um, I think that's actually kind of an interesting point Noah makes, and I'll bring it up in, like, final thoughts. But if you think about it, Girls in idol animes never age. They are eternally 15. I'm oh. on. Oh, wow. That's, wow. Uh, oh, I'm, Jesus I'm adding Christ, that. Megan. Okay, I'm adding that to my theory list. Thank you. Like, I'm, on. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, li I like playing Love Live School Idol Festival, and I follow some, um, I follow some uh, people who do, like, scouting videos. And I think it was Oh Heck, which is um, a, 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 pair of, uh, a guy and a girl from Canada who are just best friends with each other. And it's, uh, they actually make that joke in one of their scouting videos for one of the girls' birthdays. <laughs> it's like, happy birthday, Pana. You'll be 15 forever. It's like Ash Ketchum. Yep. Ash Ketchum doesn't age. Ash Ketchum is forever 10. He just drains the essence of every girl he travels with at the end of the series. Okay, now you're going back to morbid. <laughs> There's, a, there, there's only been one show. I could be wrong, but I think there's only one show I've ever seen that actually addressed the... Uh, fictional characters never age thing and that was this crazy special episode of fairly odd parents where timmy actually made a wish that they never age so they're actually addressing the fact that they've been the same age for however many years the show has been on i've never seen our show do that before it's also really weird because uh zombie land saga is the only show i've ever like seen with uh female idols besides idol master where they're like actually oh one of them is actually over the age of 18 hmm there's probably a, a big discussion about Japan's society and It's really weird because Idol Master has a couple of them that are actually adults, but all of the male idol shows I've watched, a majority of the cast is actually adults. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh 
So. Because uh, Sogo and uh, Yam- uh, Yam- Yam- Yamamoto can drink in Idolish 7, and so can uh, Kamu and Kamu Reiji and Ranmaru can all drink in uh, Udapuri. So I find that really interesting about uh, male Here, here's and female Here's the train, idolaters. here's the rail, and here's how far apart <laughs> they are from each other. Now, 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 this is germane to the themes of the show, but we should get back on track. <laughs> That's true. Sorry. No, no. That, no like, no, a good no, chunk no, of no. the beginning of this episode is getting cut out. No, so. no, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. That's a super fascinating topic that is probably going to be relevant to what this show is going for. So that was that was on point. It, it um, was. But... Anywho, uh, Noah, do you have any predictions? Yeah, this, uh, okay, we, we were talking about Lily and Yaguri. So, yes. Lil, Lily is, um, uh, th- there's quite a few uh, Funimation voice actresses who have played lollies before, and there is uh, one in particular that I, um, I probably had this in mind just because I've been meaning to rewatch the show recently, but, um, Jade Saxton does <laughs> some really good I knew work. where you were going with this! I knew you were going straight for Kana! I- Sorry, but I, I kind of want to watch the show again. But yes, I, I thought of Kana. Ravioli, Ravioli, do not loo the dragon lolly. <laughs> never, 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 never loo the dragon lolly, ever. Ravioli, Ravioli, do not loo the zombie idol lolly. I can't stop him from doing that, you, you, unfortunately. You, you really, I mean, you really shouldn't do that. Not only is it, it's gross in multiple ways. Don't it, do it. It's just unsanitary. Um, so yeah, that was my prediction for Lily was Jade. She's got like she's just got a really sweet uh, little girl voice that she can do for a lot of range. Um, like you know, we've seen her do a ton of shows where she's like all over the place. She's yeah, she's she's really good. She's Jade Saxon, people, and uh, that leaves us with Yuguri. Yuguri's um, personality, because I should also preface that I made all my predictions for all of the idol characters by the way they growled in episode one. So. I made- <laughs> All the predictions, just like how, how they're trying to eat uh, Sakura in the first episode. Um, also because character designs are sometimes a giveaway for the archetypes that are coming with them. And the descriptions that we get for what types of idols they were also helped a little bit. So because we know that Yuguri was a courtesan mm-hmm. and also from, uh, I think they actually said she was from the Meiji time period. Uh, I was thinking of mm-hmm. someone who was um, like, uh, f- who has that sort of regal voice to her in previous shows. So, um, and having uh, watched Kakuguri, not not Kakuguri, Kakurio, not too long ago. Oh God! Alexis Tipton plays a uh, similar character. She plays Suzeron, but yeah, she plays Spider Suzeron. And there's uh, no. Oh my God! My favorite ending theme of the year is actually the duet between uh, those two, the brother and Spider sister Seiyu. Yep. It's really pretty. It, it is. It really is. So uh, I know that Alexis didn't sing that part, but uh, she played the English part of that character very well. So, um, yeah, Jade and Alexis for green hair and brunette, because I had to write down all the hair colors to make sure I could keep them, tell them all apart in the first episode. Okay. Um, uh, Jamal, uh, do you have any predictions? Uh, before I go on, did I just hear you make a dick clock reference earlier? Yes, Worlds? you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, what that, that's what that was. You're correct. <laughs> uh, me and TV... Uh, <laughs> I watch a lot of game shows. So for Lily, I kind of copped out with Love Life too, and I also had Sir We Did Heft. Uh, but I also had Bryn April and Madeline Morse because I know they could both do like high pitched voices. But for you, you Giri, this is kind of why I went off the beaten path. I had Tia Ballard as my first pick because I've heard her, hmm. uh, God, I've heard her do deeper sensual voice before. I also had Brynn doing her natural voice actually because her natural voice is her bigger voice really. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And I may have typecasted a bit. I went Jamie Markey. Has Although, she played a courtesan in a show before? I mean, she can. I've heard her do that kind of voice. Yes, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know she's capable of that. Okay. I mean, does panty count? No. No. <laughs> no. Hell no. I mean, she's courted a lot of songs, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Try the right ball part, though. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I. Damn it, Chris! Damn it, Kristen! <laughs> There's just a picture of David Mills. He's like in my natural habitat, and it's him holding two different Starbucks items. <laughs> and Kristen just goes double fisting it, eh? 
Kristen! You know, I was- She wrote DX, the new DXD season! She knows more euphemisms <laughs> for boobs and penis than anybody! I was a little worried that our crassness might be a little over the top for, you know, the fine folks at Funimation, but... On second thought, maybe we're not crass enough. No, no, if there's one thing I've learned about anime nerds is that they all seem like they're, like, you know, sort of innocent and, and they don't know anything about sex. That's really not But true. we know that's every real, euphemism that's really for the devil's true. sausage. They, they, they are horny as 76 trombones leading the big parade. <laughs> <laughs> trombones. I am... <laughs> Bone. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna steal, I'm gonna steal that metaphor for future years. <laughs> <laughs> Amon, do you have? Did you do your predictions yet, Amon? No, I did not. I do have some predictions. God, we're six um, hours into this episode. <laughs> so, um, for Lily, uh, I also thought Jane Saxton might be a good pick. I should note a lot of my picks involved um, going to the cast page for like a couple, a couple of like musical shows I know have been done in Funimation. And it's like, all right, can they sing? All right, they got the right voice range. Cool, great. Because um, I haven't actually watched a lot of them. I'm sad to say. Uh, so I also thought Jade Saxton would be a good choice. And for uh, Giri, I actually thought uh, Monoprieola might be fun, because I'm a fan of her big girl voice, and I thought that would be a good fit for this character. You are right. Uh, I can definitely hear that, definitely see that happening. Indeed. Uh, however, in actuality... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Yuri Giri is being played by... Don't turn off, Tablet. I need you for my notes. Uh, <laughs> Yuri Giri. How dare you fail me, technology! Yeah, and it, once again, technology is in the end of me. So not only is Amon a zombie, but so is his technology. It's a sad fact. By the Don't end of this episode, you, the viewer, will be a zombie too. <laughs> so, uh, Yugiri is played by Stephanie Young, who you know for such shows as Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood, Historic Legend of Arslan, and Show by Rock. And Lily is played by Sarah Wiedenhaft, who you know for such shows as Blood Blockade, Battlefront, Classroom of the Elite, and Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Uh, Megan, let's start us off. What do you think of these performances? So, one of the things I really like about Lily is that Lily is definitely supposed to be the stereotypical, like, cutesy little lolly girl type that you know if they have, if you, you know that there are people who just genuinely enjoy this character because they want to love and protect with double C's this sweet, <laughs> innocent child and the other, like... <laughs> 1.01% of that population deserves to be sat down by Chris Hansen and go to jail. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did reference Ruby Kodosawa from Love Life Sunshine because that's who Ruby is in Love Life Sunshine. She is the meek, screamy little sister type who uh, eventually breaks away from her older sister and is like, I want to become my own person. I'm not just a crybaby anymore. And Lily has that added factor of also being a former child star, so I'd like to imagine her as zombie Mary Kate and Ashley. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. How how is that any different than the real Mary Kate and Ashley? Ooh. Shit. Shit. Ah, you got me there. Um. But no, I really like Lily because Lily sounds like. When she died, she was on, like, a sugar rush. Mm. She died from the and sugar rush. Sugar rush. S-U-G-A-R, jump into your car, cause it's I knew you were gonna- <laughs> Damn it, as soon as the words came I, out, I was like, there's gotta be a Wreck-It Ratchet I somewhere, isn't there? I don't get it, but- <laughs> Oh, that, there's- You've never seen Wreck-It Ralph? Nope. Oh my god, that's- You need to watch Wreck-It Ralph. Especially with the movie. sequel coming um, out. Yeah, we gotta take you to see it. Uh, no, uh, Wreck-It Ralph, act I think that's AKB48 if I'm right, too, isn't it? What? I thought that- I think that song is sung by, like, AKB48. I have no idea. I need to look that up while I talk about this. No, so, um, one of the things I really like about, uh, I really liked about, um, Lily as a character is that every time she's- Yeah, it is AKB48! <laughs> Insanity. Making it even more relevant than normal because AK Bor for AKB48 is a famous idol group in yeah, Japan. Yeah, I mean, I, I know um, next to nothing about idols, but even I am at least nerdy enough to know who AKB48 is. P8 is. They actually, that's actually like, they are the reason behind my favorite joke in all of Token Rambu. God. Um, <laughs> there's an idol joke in that show too. Um, 
But uh, no, one of my favorite things that is, it's an interaction that she has is that she never seems to break this persona of being an adorable little kid. And she's she's kind of the one that helps them come up with the Fran Choo Choo name. Uh, she's one of the first people who, like, is really into actually being an idol when um, I and Junko are really kind of like, eh, I don't know about this shit. This Kotaro guy is really sketchy. Why are you following him? Uh, but some of my favorite lines from Sarah Wiedenhef as uh, Lily are when Psyche keeps calling her Squirt. And she's yeah. just like, my name is Lily. And it's just like, my name is Lily. And like she gets just progressively more angry. And then there's Stephanie Young as Yugiri, who I never thought that of all the people to ever be in an idol anime... Except for if I'm right, Stephanie Young is uh, in Show Pyra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's on Daru Dayu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's Daru Dayu. I totally forgot she's Daru Dayu. And she sings in that. Oh, yeah. Which is awesome. Because I I, I think Yugiri helps in the rap battle. Oh, yeah. Um, she, no, she I'm, doesn't, I'm, well, she doesn't um, sing in it, but she does play the... She goes, yo! She, she it plays the Shami yeah. said. And she does some vocalization. Um... I am under the belief that Yugiri gets some of the best lines in the show. <laughs> because she never breaks speaking as if she is from the past. And she was a courtesan. Which means she's probably sucked a few dicks. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. okay. I, I was going to say something else, but you, you threw me off the rails there, Megan. <laughs> um, but no, I think Stephanie Young brings like a really like regality to her voice and... I like that she sounds older than all the other girls, which, even though the character's 19, I think it really helps because I think you're supposed to think she's an adult, but she's not. Mm. Um, and she gets a, 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 a really nice stuff in episode four because she's like, I've never seen a modern town before. Because, again, she didn't live through that. And she also has, like, I think this one line about going home and performing pleasure for everybody. <laughs> And Sakura just responds, yeah, we gotta work on your phrasing. Mm-hmm. And I think Stephanie Young's, like, very earnest and regal and steadfast uh, performance as Yugiri really, really sells the character for me. Because you're just like, man, you are Stephanie Young. You have played fucking queens before. <laughs> this is hysterical. Jamal, go ahead. Or Noah, go ahead. I think Noah was next. Okay. What was I going to say? I, I, okay, I remember what I was going to say now before Megan threw me off with the dick-sucking joke. Uh, it was... Uh. I just realized about this show. It's a bunch of different people from different time periods brought together for one maniac's presentation. Guys, this is Kotaro Tatsumi's Excellent Adventures. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude! Really? Just kind of Dude! Except for he's a man <laughs> instead it's, of a, t- a phone he, booth. And he doesn't have George Carlin. He has a zombie dog. Anyways, uh, we were talking about uh, we were talking about Lolly and Courtesan, and in that sense, I'm I, I know I have to watch Love Life now because the fact that both Megan and Jamal predicted accurately that this character is voiced by Sarah makes me think I, I probably am gonna have to watch Love Life. You would actually probably genuinely it, like Love Life Sunshine. You'd also genuinely like Idolish Seven. I, I already did. You already showed me an episode of Idolish Seven, and I fully admitted, without guilt, that I did enjoy the episode that you showed me. True. I finished Yuri on Ice. I will finish the rest of the Idol shows in 2019. 2019 will be the year of all of the idols. Possibly. So, um, um good things on the acting here, though. Um, I, Sarah is so distinguishable like her voice is so recognizable that even in the first episode where you just you see her character design and you hear her growling because she hasn't woken up yet you could tell it's sarah because her voice is just that distinct and that's um perfectly fitting for the show itself one thing that is you is distinct though in this performance is she has her usual um her usual cutesy voice that she's used for a lot of shows with her before like Alison Zoroku or uh Kobayashi's Dragon Maid but in this show she seems to give uh Lily a younger speech pattern like intentionally trying to sound like a little kid where some of the words get cut off at the end like they're not fully spoken all the way in the way <laughs> a little kid would and that's uh fitting for the character so it's kind of nice that for as recognizable as Sarah is that she still has 
some uniqueness to it that stands out from her other performances. Like, I hear this, and it sounds different enough from the other Sarah roles that I've heard her in before. Uh, Stephanie surprises me, because I don't have, like, a go-to role when I think of Stephanie Young in terms of, like, stuff she's done in the past. But in this one, it's definitely the most regal-sounding of the group. And uh, I like the fact that she doesn't really have, like, a full-on accent. Like, sometimes these uh, Meiji-era characters will be given, like, a British accent to emphasize a regal, I'm from an old world time period kind of voice. And I like that Stephanie doesn't go that far. Um, like you were saying, Megan, her regal voice helps to sell the character because she doesn't get a whole lot of speaking lines in the first three episodes. But the parts where she does speak definitely helps define her from all of the other characters. And that's a good point on the show is that all seven of the idol characters are distinct not just in where they're from because they they are all from a different time period apparently but also that they're distinct in personalities as well which yeah i know is kind of a trope of idols that you need a wide range of characters and in this sense between sarah and stephanie we get very diverse focal ranges as well so i give uh two and a half thumbs up for both of these nice uh jamal Okay, so with Lily, like I said, I thought some of this casting was going to be safe. And then I started listening to the dub. I don't know how, but Sarah manages to sound higher pitched than she ever has before. Like, and I've heard Sarah in higher pitches. So when I heard Lily, I thought oh, that this was kind of impressive. Like, like she manages to combine I and out, I guess, most of the aspects she learned. Growing up as a child actress with, I don't know, being an actual child, I guess. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, the, the thing that some people do, they actually be chi children at first and sometimes. Okay, sometimes pretty much when people tell you act your old age, sometimes you act more mature than you really are, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's what I sense from Lily. So the fact that she can play a high-pitched character... But still managed to act more mature. It's very impressive. Especially if it follows Sarah on Twitter. So, I overall, Sarah did a pretty good job. As for Yugiri, I was kind of worried in the beginning. Because when I saw Stephanie Young, I thought maybe it was going to be a little bit too old. And then I remember she played Daru Dayu. And hearing Yugiri, hearing Yugiri sounds kind of impressive. It actually did take me back to show by Rock a bit. Because... Both her and Daru Dayu are, they both have an air of arrogance, they both smoke from this little pipe, and they both- Oh, that's right, that bitch is smoking some straight up opium. Well, she's smoking, I know that. <laughs> ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba. Da -ba -ba. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> especially once you get to episode six, but that's a different story. Oh, God. Anyway, Stephanie manages to be very impressive in this role. It blew my expectations of her out of the water. Out of the mud, too. But anyway, Armand, you have any, more, any thoughts on these two? Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with both of these performances. Um, I think Sarah really nails the, like... Like, uh, like you guys were talking about, the really, like, kind of, like, innocent, you know, uh, hyper, you know... It cute but kind of a little bit annoying quality that Lily has, which I think she's like she's very funny, especially when she's like complaining about like, but I want a cute group name. Yeah. Can't be we can't whatever she, you know she just just uniformly rejects whatever Saki Saki is um suggesting or troll, which are all things that like a biker gang would call themselves. Yeah, um, that that was a very good bit. I Psyche think. is Psyche is slowly becoming best. Girl. Oh, she's great. Uh, she's we'll, already we'll, best girl for me. <laughs> We'll get we'll get to her, but she's she's a delight. Um, she's just she just really nails that quality where it's like, and, and, and that way where it's like it's sort it it's not actually annoying, but it's sort of like ah oh, you would be you would be a you you are that character, aren't you? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it's just really well done, I thought. And I really enjoy Stephanie as uh, Yugiri just for the you know, she brings all this like class and regality, and she she like very much comes off as this you know and she has that you know. She seems very, you know, like, I actually did not think she was supposed to be a teenager. I actually assumed mentally, it's like, oh, you're clearly much older than all these other people. Like, the rest of them, oh, clearly, you're, you're like, you're like, what, 30? Oh, you're 19? <laughs> oh, oh. This is not Greece. I didn't think they were going to go that far. I know, but like, like. You're she, the one that I want. I know, but she, she seemed early. She seemed much older. 
Uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, exactly. And like, it, so do you think in the end of Greece that they both died in a car accident and the fair was just a fever dream, or? Well, uh, what one of them uh, turned into a Greek goddess and uh, wound up in a roller skate movie, and the other one got reincarnated as a mafia hitman with Samuel L. Jackson. So pro- probably they did probably die. You, where that was a weird uh, the the <laughs> the guy in that. What? No, I mean, in the universe that I saw him get reincarnated into, he was a fat mom in Baltimore. <laughs> oh! Wait, did, wait, wait, I'm sorry, but did that... No, that did take place after Greece, technically. Because Greece was 50s, and Welcome to the 60s was Hairspray. So. 60s? But, but wait, she would have had to have been alive during the time period. I'm sorry, this isn't Cloud Atlas. We're not doing this again. It wasn't the girl who was the fat mom in... Fucking hairspray? That was Travolta! No, I know! I, I was trying to remember the name of that, thank you. <laughs> I know it was Travolta. And look, if I could be married to Christopher Walken, I would be too, okay? But we can't Two. all be John Travolta. <laughs> Welcome back. Living the dream, Travolti! Living the dream! Welcome back, Connor. <laughs> How many references can you squeeze in one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm as many so musical many. references as I How can. Let's, let's, let's do let's, the time let's, warp let's, again. Let's stop now before we get into John Travolta's actual career as a brief career as a terrible teen idol in the 70s. Um, can... Instead, tonight we will talk about Marky Mark and the Funky No, 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 yeah, Megan, no. stop that. We need to stop talking about that and we need to be <laughs> staying alive, staying alive, ah. Uh, 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 stay uh, alive. Uh, stay alive. I'm sorry, Amon. You probably want to kill me now, don't you? No, that's 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 that is that that is, it, again, we're talking about zombies. That is a really appropriate song. Anyways, Trying to uh, bring it back around. Uh, Stephanie is very fun as Yugiri. Um, she she like she she has very funny lines and she always delivers them in like just this wonderfully straight manner. It's she's, she's very much the character who like is much funnier than her own performance would suggest. If that makes any sense. Like she she does she she plays it like very like just you know I'm a professional I'm, I'm you know this regal classy lady who's, who's used to entertaining people and it's it's a lot of fun I like her a lot. Uh, yeah no these are both very good performances uh, thumbs up all around. Uh, uh, are we ready to move on to the next segment? Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. So next up uh, we have more idols. Shocking, I know. Uh, we have I uh, Hisei, uh, who was a uh, part of the uh, early 2000s idol boom in Japan. Uh, she's got this nice black haircut. And uh, we have Junko Kodo, who was a big name idol in the 1980s. Uh, she's got a white haircut, and that's why I put them together, because they kind of contrast visually. <coughs> you you uh, mispronounced it, Amon. Her name is Junko. Is it Junko? No, that's like sh- what she gets miscalled in episode four. Oh, okay. Question. Question: Is it Heisei or Mizuno? Because I have Mizuno on my. I have no. I, I think I, I want to say I got this off. This Here's what happened. Thing. Um, she her name is Mizuno, but she's from the Heisei period. Oh, that's probably what it. I probably misread the screen cap when I was writing stuff down. That makes. <laughs> yeah, sense. There, there's a lot I of admit... information to keep track of. Well, editor, make change that. Um, anyways, uh, Megan, did you have any predictions for these characters? Uh, for Junko and I. Yes. Yeah, so we'll start out with uh, Junko. For Junko, I thought she was going to be a bit more of a quieter character. And she looked like she would be kind of like more of your quiet, uh, your kind of quiet, more soft-spoken person. So I actually went with Megan McLean or Danny Chambers uh-huh. because of their performances respectively as um, Ray and uh, Chisei. Mm-hmm. And for Junko, uh, I did, did I said Junko just or did I? Junko. Okay, cool. So for I, I actually had Tia Ballard or Felicia on mm-hmm. They just kind of both screamed uh, Felicia or Tia to me, and those two are a dynamic duo of friends, so I figured it'd be one of the two of them. Cool. All right, uh, Noah. Let's see. Um, I'll go with I first. Um, for her, I predicted, I think this was, I'm not quite sure why I put her here. I think it's, um, I put Dawn Bennett uh, for I's voice. And, um, again, I wish I remember exactly why I put this one here. I, I just wrote down she's got a regal period voice um, just because I's got the a look of, like, a more composed person. And, I don't know, I just, I guess uh, I was trying to fill out, like, all the 
voice actresses I knew of who have been in musical shows, so I had Dawn Bennett there. Uh, Junko was actually the last one that I filled in. Like, I had all the slots filled in, and I had a big gaping hole in what do I think Junko's going to be? Because I didn't really have, like, an idea about what's an, a 1980s idol supposed to sound like. So the, the only voice I had that I, or voice actress that I didn't filled in yet was I didn't have Caitlin Glass anywhere. And since I thought she was going to be the director, I also thought that she would want to be in the show itself. So I thought, okay, I don't have her anywhere else. I'll put her as Junko. Very scientific way to predict characters. Indeed. Uh, Jamal. Uh, for Junko, I also thought quite soft-spoken characters. And I had Shermie Lee. I'll say Caitlyn Bob because I figured, you know, she'd want to get in this one too. But mm-hmm. I'll say Edward April because I thought if they were going to pick her for anything, you know, she does do quite soft spoken easily. Uh, for I, I kind of went with someone with a natural voice, so I had Kristen McGuire. But I also had Jade Saxon because I figured she'd want to get in here too. Mm. But I also had Ariel Grab because I really liked her performance as Mao and Hida Matsui, and I liked to see her do more things. Ariel. Ariel Graham. Is she. Was she in Seven Mortal Sins? Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's a girl in Seven Mortal Sins who I really, really liked as an actress, and she hasn't. I think she's only popped up in, like, one other thing, and it upsets me. Um. Uh... Anyways, uh, for my predictions, uh, for Junko, I also thought uh, Brynn April might be a good fit. And for I, I uh, thought FEU might be a nice fit here. Because I like her, and I feel I feel like th- the things I watch tend to not cast her in them. So this might be a nice uh, role for her. Wait, who? Uh, FEU. Afia. 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 Oh, okay. <sighs> One day but, I'll learn how to pronounce names correctly. What I'm, what I'm getting from this, then, is that Amon has not watched Gosik yet. No, I haven't. I, I'm gonna be straight with you guys. Most of my anime watching uh, habits is what what shows am I on for the podcast, and that tends to dictate everything else. So what you're saying? We've already we done Gosik. Do we need to do an Afia U marathon so you can watch more shows. She's in. I'm watching Gosik for the first time next year. I think. Mm. Aman, get yourself over to Megan's place. Fine. I was going to say, have you watched Assassination Classroom yet, yes, Alman, but very, All the way through? It, no, not all the way through, and I'll, I'll, I'll be entirely honest. She's, um... I'm entirely honest. She's, uh, that, one that, of the... that show has so many characters, I have a hard time keeping track of who's who. Uh, she's, uh, the blonde-haired girl, Rio. Oh, okay. Okay, I've, she's not I've seen the whole show, and even I don't remember which character you're talking about. I can actually... If you actually pulled up a cast of the Assassination Classroom characters and just flashed a card in front of me, I could probably do most of the And cast. this is why we're putting you on that Jeopardy episode where every column is just name that anime voice actor. <laughs> oh no, if you want a more terrifying thing, pull up the token Rambu Hanamaru cast. I can do it completely from memory. Yeah, she can do that. I... No. And that's like 60 plus characters. Are you a witch, Megan? No, but I am obsessed. <laughs> So, speaking of obsessed... I'm not lying that at, like, the next con, one of you better fucking do that to me. Alright, we will. Speaking uh, of... So, a... Yeah, who voices uh, these characters? In actuality, uh, I is in fact voiced by Brent April. What? I know, we... I, I, I was I was amused to see I was not the only one who selected her for this group for the wrong character. Uh, and Junko is played by Amanda Lee. Uh, Brent April, you might know for such shows as... Assassination Classroom, Into Groups, Monster Girls, and Show by Rock. And Amanda Lee, you might know for such shows as Anonymous Noise, Kakeryo. 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 Just 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 enough fouls all the road to mess me up. And uh, Magical Girl Raising Project. Uh, So, Megan, why don't you start us off? What do you think of these performances? I actually had Amanda Lee predicted for another character, (laughs) so I was actually really (laughs) (sighs) surprised. I, I think I also had Bryn as another character. I don't 100%. I have to look at my cast list. I think I had Bryn. So, no, okay. I didn't have Bryn on my list at all, but I had Amanda Lee as one of my other char- as one of the other characters now, on Now, here. why would you have an actress like Amanda Lee in a musical show like this? Has she done anything musical? Because Amanda Lee can sing really well. Has she do- um, where can I see some of her singing? On her YouTube channel, Lee and Lee. <laughs> plug, plug, plug. Do we do we get paid for these sponsorships? No, you can if you actually do want to listen to her covers, you can go on YouTube to her YouTube channel, Lee and Lee. She's pretty she's a really good cover singer. 
Do I 100% agree with the changes made to the music in those covers? Not really, but that's my own personal opinion. And I'm not going to knock her for her beautiful singing voice. That being said, I love her. She is... I or Junko. I'm screw mixing Amanda them up. Amanda is Junko. Okay. I love her as Junko because the other big thing that Amanda Lee really did this year was uh, everyone's favorite girl of the spring. Oh god, what the fuck is her name from Hinamatsuri? Anzu. Anzu from uh, Hinamatsuri. Who is very upbeat, kind of growly, and wants to punch Brina Palencia in the face at the beginning of the show. <laughs> That's about as far as into Hinamatsuri as I got. Um, but Junko is so quiet and kind of reserved. And I actually could not believe it was Amanda Lee. Like, I had never heard her like that. Because um, even her character in Kakarillo was a lot more youthful. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that I really like about her performance as Junko is that both Junko and I seem really jaded to idol culture and the idea of being idols. Where... Uh, someone like Yuguri, who has no concept of this at all. And Lily, who is just like, yeah, I want to put my all into it. And Sakura, who, before she died, that was her goal. And I think if you watch the first episode, I think that she was watching the band that yeah. I or Junko was I, from. I, I got the, the I. Yeah, no, I, 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 she's watching the band that I's from. Yeah, I, I got the impression um, that, you were, that, you, that that was supposed to be I's band, yeah. Yeah, Iron Fro, I think it's what's called. Yeah. But, um... She, yeah, Iron Fro... I think, no, it was... I sent something to my friend, and it was, like, some weirdly weird, like, BDSM rat taxidermy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, like... And my friend Doug just sends back, Rat Corset, that's the new name of my metal band. <laughs> um, but... I just like how Amanda Lee didn't do, I think, with Junko what we expect from idols. Because it's very rare that you get an idol that's very jaded in their voice vocal performance. It does remind me a little bit of the girls from Saint Snow from Love Live Sunshine. But taken to like an nth degree of this is serious business. But there's also something that's just very deeply, I think, lost in her heart. And the same can be said as Bryn April, as I, uh, Bryn April, as April, April, whatever, um, as I, who I think has even more baggage than the others. She's really the most resistant to being an idol. And I think that there's something there. And I feel like she's going to be one of the characters that's kind of the last to really come out of her shell. And I, I also couldn't... I want to say I couldn't imagine this was Bryn, but then I remembered Historia Rice as a character exists. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me a lot of her season three Historia performance, which is really weird because Historia is hardcore AF. Damn straight. Um, God bless the best moment in Attack on Titan is when she just smacks Aaron and goes, you're an idiot. <laughs> like thank you i've waited three seasons for this um but i i really love them and i'm really happy to see that um especially for Bryn, who was the peppy happy idol i'm gonna make everybody feel really great um character and show by yeah. rock to see her playing someone so jaded is great uh, it's just like you get drunk once <laughs> you you eat one edible and you're just like fuck this world um that being said, I'll hand it on over to Noah. This show makes a whole lot more sense if you see if, if you see I as an extension of Cyan's character from Show by Rock. Just like her, she's Cyan's shadow, the other well, self. Well, I mean, you could. She... You'll never see it coming. No, you won't. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Not like that. No, no, no just never mind. <laughs> oh. Back on happier topics. Um, I, I want to talk about uh, Amanda's Junko because. Um, when I was saying before that all of these kind of shows that have a, a diverse cast need to have each character be slightly different from each other, I feel like Amanda's interpretation of Junko is to fill the the girly girl vocal quota that we need in the whole show because she sounds the she's the most vulnerable sounding out of all of them. Whereas by episode two, almost everybody has kind of 
accepted the, um, like, yes, we're dead. Yes, we're zombies. Let's just roll with it. She's the one who's still having trouble coping with the whole thing. She's still scared, and she's got this uh, timber that Amanda gives her, which is, I wouldn't say it's quieter, but it's definitely more vulnerable sounding than everybody else. And I, I like the the attitude that she gives it, because, I, again, I didn't know what a 1980s idol was supposed to even sound like. So it gives a distinct voice to Junko that none of the other ones have. And it also really helps in, like, the episode two where they're trying to run away. And you buy the, I don't, I'm trying to get away from all of this. I don't, I don't belong here kind of mentality. And then moving on to your Bryn in April, her voice is one that I'm not really used to. Damn you. You're welcome. What have you you got that? Oh, I got that too. I just ignored it. You can't ignore my puns. Puns will live forever. We may die and become zombies, but puns will live forever. Anyways, Bryn's voice is one that I also, kind of like Megan, I don't usually hear her as the, her in her normal voice, in her big girl voice, because I'm used to her in stuff like uh, in, like Show by Rock or in First Love Monster, where she's got her, you know, her peppier... F- I, what? He was on that episode. He suffered with I'm me. I'm allowed to reference it. Fuck that show. But Okay, but just talking about Bryn's acting in it, which you, you should watch the show for her acting. I, I think you'd really like it, Jamal. I watched all of that show. I'm never going back again. <laughs> Once you go first love, you never go second no. love. But you do go plastic love. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> That's another show I need to finish. Thank you. <laughs> It's not a show! Oh, oh, wait, no, I'm thinking of Plastic Memories, not Plastic Love. That's that's a different thing entirely. <laughs> that's a, so, that's a Keep song. Keep going, I know, I know. Keep going. No, I can't go. I can't believe I actually stuck a fucking Plastic Love reference in an episode. Well, this is the one to do it. Now, now all you gotta do is bring it back around and reference the Bungles, the, bu- what is it, Plastic? The Bangles? No, no, the, the band who sings re- va- Video Killed the Radio Star. The Buggles. Oh, the, the Buggles, because their their album was called Plastic Age. And it all comes full circle. <laughs> what was I talking about? I was talking about Bryn for a second. Okay, so, yeah, I'm not used to her big girl voice. And so I, I distinctly wrote on here that it's uh, the least recognizable, at least to me. Um, it sounds like there are other roles where she uses her big girl voice before, so I apparently need to watch more of those. But in terms of what she actually does with this, I was surprised because it's... Not only is it a voice that I'm not used to hearing from Brynn, but it's also... I thought this character is going to be a lot brattier. I thought that Ai's uh, kind of stuck-up attitude from her jadedness would make her a little more insufferable. But she doesn't. She, she's got a very logical reason for being the way that she is. Like, she's got this sass to her that's not the annoying kind of sass. It's the, I, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And that kind of helped me uh, like the character a little bit more. Um, as of where I'm at right now, like, I'm just at the beginning of episode four. I haven't really gotten a sense of, like, where she's going to go uh, in the group. Because the last thing that I saw was her joining them in the gorilla performance. And she decides, yeah, I seeing everyone else perform out there, I guess I could be part of this group as well. And because Bryn hadn't been playing up the brattier side of Ai's character, it was... Uh, convincing that she would join the fold in because you know in these idol shows every one of the girls is eventually going to be in on it whether they want to or not they will succumb to the power of friendship so yeah amanda and brin's got the voices for the characters and again continues the the seven part rainbow of this cast to make everybody sound distinct from one another moving over to jamal Man, it's nice to see Bryn in an idol anime, because Hoshiro Girl Drop was lacking. <laughs> hey, now, uh, that, that show, you know, had plenty of uh, of singing in it. What are you talking about? What are we kidding? The best, the best fucking idol performance of all year goes to Alejandro Sav and David Wald singing Let's Pop Together and Fight Me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody actually made the super clip of that, just Alejandro, David, Caitlin Glass, and Jade Sachs, they all sing it together. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, as someone who's in my work, I'm used to, like, a lot of the Bridge Rangers. Like, I've heard a lot of her deeper voices. The first time I heard her, she was actually using her natural voice. That was Data Life. 
So I so I'm used to how she sounded overall. I do like how she puts on that hearty oh you fancy her huh? kinda attitude when really, you know, she's just kinda suppressing her idol self which when people want her to help because you know it's more of a group effort than a solo effort mm -hmm. to which Amanda Lee's performance is Junko it was kind of reminiscent of her performance in Card Captor Sakura to where you know, she could be I did not get I did not get Akiho at all in no. that Akiho was way too soft for that I mean it was just about as quiet it's just that Junko is kind of a whisper whereas Akiho was a bit more vibrant than that, you know. When she learns to open up, which Juko is going to take a while. But I thought both these ladies did a very good job, and I, I really want really to know more, especially when we get to the later episodes, because I know Bridge just saw the next episode. <laughs> Actually, the episode after next, but we'll get to that later. Hmm. Indeed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I also enjoyed. I enjoyed these two performances a lot as well. Um, I agree. I, f I find these two characters interesting because I find it notable that these are the only two members of the group who are actually like idol idols at any point, and also consequently they are by far the most hesitant <laughs> to go through with this nonsense. I'm on. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, they, so, I'm on. They've... I I have to say right now, you said idol idols, and I'm just imagining a bunch of Billy Idol fangirls. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure that's it's the a... thing. Ah oh, yes, is it a day for a white wedding? Yes, it is. But they'll still be dancing with themselves. Um, yeah, I, I I find that interesting in part because like I don't watch a lot of Love Live and so on, but I have seen Perfect Blue, which is kind of my idea of like what idol culture in Japan is like, and that's obviously a very oh god, that's a very, that's a very extreme version of how that all goes. So, <laughs> um. Uh, but I, 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 thought, I thought these performances were very nice in that regard, particularly in contrast to a lot of the other characters who are a lot um, louder. Uh, I liked how Amanda brought a lot of this, um, <coughs> sort of the softness to Junko. Like, she, she looks the most, um, she kind of looks like a frightened rabbit all the time. And I thought Amanda kind of brought that quality to her, like she always looks the most alarmed at what's going on. Um, I particularly like Brynn as um, I, who I thought... Uh, just you know, she she has this like kind of open cynicism about the whole thing, which I thought was very interesting in contrast to the rest of what's going on. Particularly because you know everyone else is a lot more gung ho about it; they're a lot more into it. Um, it was a nice balance. I also think I think it was Bryn who had one of my favorite parts of episode two, where I Junko and Sakura are trying to escape, and I think I is the one who gets her arms fall off. Mm -hmm. Yep, and her eyes on the fence. Out. Yeah, and her eyes pop out. And I thought, and I I find that kind of stuff very funny. So I appreciated that as a stupid joke. You have a very I, sick sense of humor. Look, look, I'm going to look. Look, the highlight of the show so far has been when they play a pot potato with Tay's head. Yes, it that's is. That's <laughs> hilarious, and you will not tell me otherwise. That is great. <laughs> Anywho, um, but yeah, no, the, the, I like both of these performances. They felt very strong. I'm very curious to see where these characters go from here. They feel like characters who are going to be. Uh, since we mentioned, like, even though this is a comedy, there is, like, emotional weight to what's going on, and I feel like we're going to get a lot more from those characters going forward. So I'm looking forward to that, uh, in addition to enjoying what we've gotten so far. Uh, are we ready to move on to the next set of characters? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. I, uh, I like I like the fact we brought up White when you mentioned the next lyric in the song was, it's a nice day to start again. Uh, it's... It's, it's a nice day to start again. <laughs> it really, of... it really does. It really does fit for the two idols in this show. It's, it's just a lot of synchronicity in this episode, guys. It's all coming together. Listen here, I am trying to get to one reference to drop, and if I do, I officially get to keep my degree from college. <laughs> and if I do that, you might also turn into mailmen. Oh, that's all right. Um, so. Which that in itself is a reference to something, and if you actually get that reference, I will be surprised. <laughs> if it's a song reference, I hate you. It's not a song oh, okay. reference, actually. I wasn't actually paying attention, show. but if I hear it again, maybe I might get it. When I, I, I if I bring up this, I feel like Amon, Amon might get this joke because I feel like Amon's the only person who has ever actually seen something called the de the Cabinet of Doctor Caligari. I have seen that movie. That's true. Oh wait! Have you ever, I'm, do you know I'm, what I'm putting things together in my head now? I think I know where this is going. Do you get the postman joke now? I think I do. Yes. What is it a reference oh. to? 
Look, as long as it's not, oh yeah, wait a minute, Mr. Postman, I'm fine. Oh. It's not. Anyway, well, Amma thinks of that. Who are we talking about uh, next? We are talking about Tayamada. Uh, who she is the, the leg- legendary Tai Yamada. Yeah. What is she legendary for? Unclear. But but what is she here? Legendary. Fuck you. That's why. Fine. Unclear. Fuck it. You're not legendary now. Everyone Tay, else is Tay, legendary, but you. Tay, Tay, My mom tells me I'm legendary. Tay, Tay is legendary because four episodes in, she still acts like a zombie, which is really unusual for everything else. In and the she's show. voiced by Sailor Fucking yes. Moon in there Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Let us note: her Japanese seiyu is in fact Sailor Moon. Which is which is the sort of preposterous stunt casting that I can get behind. Bravo show. I mean, do you really think it was black. intentional? Yes. No, yes. I, I, ca- ca- casting casting the voice actress for one of the like most famous anime characters to play a character who just grunts a lot. That's hysterical. That's like uh. Oh. Somebody somebody at Mappa was on. Somebody at Mappa was using the Galaxy. Oh yeah, <laughs> I will like... never understand that meme. It's go ahead because we don't no, either. No one really understands it. They just have a vague idea of how it works. Um, hey, we're always the legendary. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Sorry, uh, we have legendary Tay Yamada and also Psyche Nikado, who is the leader of a all-girl biker gang back in the day. I'm assuming probably the 80s, though. I'm not sure. I think it's actually the 90s, because she mentions that her Tamagotchi... Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was the indicator the that... I, I had to stop the episode. <laughs> Damn, my Tamagotchi's probably <laughs> had dead. To sto- <laughs> had to stop the episode at that line, because I'm like... I, I'm not gonna get angry. I'm, oh shit, I haven't fed my Neopets in years! <laughs> I'm not gonna be upset, I'm, I'm just gonna be disappointed. <laughs> Holy shit, I haven't fed my Neopets in I'm years. I'm just amazed that... Okay, they had to censor the word Wikipedia for copyright whatever but they were fully allowed to say the word tamagotchi i think they probably paid for that that's why they couldn't pay for wicca beep who would you is it the bad dead i don't yeah, think I so I'm not, I'm not sure like i have a vague recollection of them coming back for a while but i'm not sure they're a thing anymore it might also just be Wait that thing where, like it might also be the thing where like bleeping wikipedia is funny bleeping, I don't... Ta- bleeping tamagotchi is not funny it might be, but every re- every show that I've seen that bleeps out brand names had to do so for legal reasons and not just as a joke. I mean, I think I think it, I think it's I think it's one of those things like it's it's. I mean, if Iraqi can get away with it, so Iraqi can get away with it, so why can't we? It's one, it's one of those things where like I don't. No. It's not it's not legal specifically. It's more like <laughs> we'd rather just like avoid any potential legal issue entirely. But it, it's still dependent on like, are they going to sue? I mean, I understand that's why they never reference McDonald's. They always call it Wickdonald's or Wiki D's <laughs> or just those two. So right. I can. So I mean, just flip it around and make it Wikipedia. It's fair. Um, anyways, uh, so yes, we have our we have the legendary and this uh, biker gang leader. Uh, Megan, did you have any predictions for these characters? Yeah, so my predictions for Tai Yamada, because I didn't know um, if she was going to be soft-spoken, if she was going to be hard-spoken. But for some reason, my mind was like, make it Natalie Hoover or Megan Shipman. Oh. Do it, bitch. <laughs> so that's what happened after New and Game. And I, did, I didn't know. What? What the hell? Oh, oh I'm just connecting the dots here. My brain does not work most days. Um, and then for Psyche Nikaido, because I thought she was going to have a deeper, more gruffy, growly voice. Uh, I actually had Alex Moore or Trina Nishimura. Hmm. Makes sense. Uh, Noah, do you have any predictions? Yeah, with, um, again, because um, as of the time of recording, we don't know what Tay's actual speaking voice is going to be like, but I-, I got the idea from the very distinct growls we've had that she w- uh, would have a huskier voice to her. And so um, I was thinking of Morgan Garrett, uh, probably because, uh, again, I was thinking back to the Kakarillo episode where she played uh, Oreo. Yes, Oreo, the uh, blue, blue-haired <laughs> or- ice. The snow the, bitch. The blue-haired snow girl. Who's got a voice that, like, I just thought that would kind of match with what I assume Tay is going to sound like. I could be completely wrong. Like, she she could sound like nothing we have any idea about coming up. But as recording, this is all we've got to go off of. 
And as for Saki, uh, Megan's gonna love me for this. So, um, as of recording right now, I am just finishing up uh, editing the Tanaka-kun episode. And there is a blonde-haired mm -hmm. biker gang kind of character in that show as well. And that character is voiced by Lucy Christian. I... Oh, that's right, geez, she I, is! Aichizen? I, I, is that how you pronounce it? I learned how to pronounce mm -hmm. it for that episode, and then I forgot. But um, that, that, that was just on my brain. And like I said, once you get a voice actress or a name in your head, it's kind of hard to uncouple yourself from that. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm, I'm guessing Lucy Christian. All right, uh, Jamal. Okay, so for disclaimer, I kind of went off the... Obviously, I went off the grudge for these two. But, but in Saki's case, I also went based off of episode two. So for Ty, I had Anastasia Munoz because that was the first name that popped into my head for some reason. I had Terry Doty because, you know, she loves zombies and I thought she was going to show up here somewhere. But I also had what I considered to be her voice double, uh, Emily Fajardo. Mm-hmm. Who, if you've never heard of her, please watch Chio School Road. She is fucking awesome. In oh, that. thank you. I was like, where have I heard the name before? And... Yes. For Saki, though, I also had her as Saki. I also had her Emily Neves for something different because Emily Neves' rage is very scary, I've learned. But. But in a good <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah. But. Going off the grunts, I I swear to you, in the Japanese, it sounded like Brittany Karpowski. And I was like, you know what? I, I could see her as this character. Like, this is a kind of character she could play easily. Like, hmm. yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the most badass character Brittany's played before. And I'm, it's probably Karen Tendo. Uh, I, Joe? Hmm? Soul Leader. Black Star. I don't. Mm. Black Star's kind yeah, of an idiot. Black Star, kind. <laughs> you can't wait, wait, be an kind idiot. Of? I'm sorry. You can't. kind of. He is an idiot. He. Is, I mean, yes, badass, but that gets outweighed by the massive amounts of stupidity. Even if he did trick that one character with the smoke screen effect or whatever that was in episode five. Mifune got done so dirty in the manga. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much like pretty much any show where she's yelling. It, it would kind of work because Saki's kind of a shouter, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, she's very forceful. You have to be. She's a biker, for God's sakes. Mm hmm Yeah. Dang it. Now uh, that now you mentioned Brittany being, like, a biker gang character, I'm imagining Ayu from canon going around with, like, she's throwing chains around, like, a chain gang with a biker <laughs> jacket. Being called, Nagisa from Quanad. No, that was Lucy Christian. <laughs> Oh, who's Brittany Karbowski? She's, um, she wasn't um, Starfish. Who, who was she in that? Isn't she Rio? I do not. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's been a while since I've seen the clan ad dub. Review Starlight Biker Gang yeah, Edition. Yeah, there you go. But there was a biker in that show. Yeah. She was one of the best characters in the show. But the point is, is that everyone eventually, after you've gone through your idol phase, you will join a biker gang. It's just inevitable. Or musical theater! <laughs> or both! So, what you're saying is... Uh, I'm not going there, never mind. And that kid just how we got Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> we have run out of... God, we've been recording this episode so long, it's yesterday. <laughs> In about 20 minutes, it will be yesterday. That's <laughs> uh, true. 40 minutes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, I also had some predictions. Um, for Tay... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I originally thought Caitlin Glass might be the director here, and I thought, hey, Caitlin would probably want to be in the show, but she's going to be very busy directing the simul dub. What better character to play than the one who just kind of grunts a lot and doesn't say anything, and will probably be really easy to record lines for? So I thought Caitlin Glass might play Tay. Uh, and for Psyche, uh, I thought Don Bennett would be fun in this role. Hmm. Um, but, 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 in actuality, uh, Tay Yamada is played by Don Bennett, and Saiki Nikaido is played by Caitlin Glass. I find it very, oh, man, find it very funny that I managed to flip those two by How the hell accident. did that happen? I don't know. Flip, flip, flip. Like, look, look, <laughs> man, I, I don't know. Flip, flip. 
flap. Did you flip, flip, honestly flap. just start singing the flip flappers ending song? <laughs> yes. yes. Well, he did flip flap. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an appropriate musical cue. You big. There are no. And now we at Studio Three. Wait, it was Studio Three H. Studio right? Three Hertz. That did flip flap. Studio. Th now we at Studio Three Hertz are gonna trip some fucking acid. <laughs> 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 so can, wait, can can zombies even get high? Remember, they absorb things faster. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Dom Bennett, you might know for uh, such shows as Garo the Animation, Norigami Aragato, and Show by Rock, and Kaylin Glass, you know for such shows as Bakano, Oran High School Host Club, and Skip Beat. Uh, Megan, why don't you start us off? What did you think of these performances? I know you meant to. I, this is gonna bother me because you said it's an origami ar, uh, arigato. It's an origami arigato. Oh god, you're right. God damn it. <laughs> Domo ari. Arigato means arigato, fighting Mr. stance. Mr. That's why. Uh, god. Oh god, 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 this is, yeah. god. This is this really no Noah, I think you're turning Japanese. I think you're turning Japanese. I really. I, think I'm sorry. So. I, I'm <laughs> so ashamed of myself. I will turn into a vapor. It's been one week since you looked at me. <laughs> that Drop doesn't have head. anything to do with it. Drop your head to the side that said you saw me. <laughs> Not since Sailor Moon's mentioned in that song. It makes complete sense. Okay, so oh, bring God. it back. <laughs> Find a way to connect it. I have no idea how to connect the dots anymore. Three points of light, Kingdom I'm, Hearts. Amon just connected the dots, genius. He did, that's what I'm saying. Thank <laughs> you, Amon, for doing that. I try. Just, it's like, Amon's literally just like Charlie Day and fucking it's always sunny right now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> just the, just the. You know what's always, you know what's always sunny in Philadelphia, what? guys. Gritty. <laughs> you son oh, of a bitch. Oh god. <laughs> you were gonna find a way to work that into this episode. I. Oh. I've done it in every other episode I've Look, been it's in. It's not even like we dislike that mas mascot at this point. It's just like it's a recurring joke at this point. He's a symbol for the fight against the capitalist pigs. <laughs> I can't. You think I'm joking, but it's I, no, not. No, no, I, I believe it. It's just that I don't have a good like, way to uh, like. How do, how, just how, I how get do I it. How do I I'm put? sorry. Let me talk about Dawn and Dawn and uh, yeah, Caitlin. let's do that. Uh, no, Dawn is really hard to talk about because Dawn doesn't say shit. <laughs> yeah, we talking about. She just grunts. Well, she well episodes. she does is but is in, in, incoherent. Yeah, it's just like that one episode of Space Dandy where all of the distinct moans mean something. You just gotta listen for the exoterities. <laughs> Tay Yamada is actually trying to speak the rest through Morse code in Morse code of grunts. <laughs> I I think at one time I heard her say the words to Kotaro, "Fuck yo couch." <laughs> um, but no, Don does a really good job, and I'm really interested to see what happens with. The, le the legend, Dairy Tai Yamada, uh, because I, I have the theory that Tai Yamada is actually a human and just fucking with them all. She's like that one girl from the uh, Breakfast Club who's just there to fuck with people. Yep. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But man, I really want to talk about Caitlyn Asaki because I didn't think that it was actually going to work. Um, I When I heard it was Caitlyn, I don't. Really, when I haven't, I unfortunately haven't watched Skip Beat. I'm watching it next year as part of my backlog. I don't remember. I remember Caitlin playing Retory, everyone's favorite yeah. uh, golden retriever. But Retory was Retory was a little little gruffer, mm -hmm. but she was still kind of in the cutesy moe range. And Jamal's Jamal, I know, is the only other person who's actually seen this. Uh, so Saki is just Murder Maki from Love Live. She is Maki. If Maki wasn't a tsundere, she was just all soon and murder. Soon murder. -ay. Um. I really need to watch Love Live. And I someday. love it. Shh. It, I mean, the first episode of Love Live starts with Honoka dancing in the road. So hey, uh. that might as well be the Zombie Land Saga <laughs> prequel. Please, Tonika, stop singing Susume tomorrow in the middle of the street. What's funny was when you said that, I thought you were going to start singing Dancing in the Street. Uh, Damn I it, thought, why didn't I I think thought you that? were going to reference another Caitlyn show and say, let's hear it for the truck. Fuck you. <laughs> you mean Fook? Fook you. Wait, Fook got. I can't work that into me. a party. Hey, wait a minute. You were supposed to get hit by a truck. I read the manga. <laughs> 
God damn you person who I'm gonna talk about. Somebody who I might be talking about later. <laughs> um, no, he's, she's a lot of fun. And I really like that. I like that it was Caitlyn of all people. Because I don't associate Caitlyn with these characters. It, it's a little bit of, a, a bit of, a bit of, like I said, murder Maki with like, with a bit of Winry to her. So I, I just really like it. And I really like how she contrasts off of the actress for Sakura, especially. And I like that she does, she sounds like a complete degenerate, like, um, as compared to like, uh, Yuguri, because she and Yuguri, I actually thought were a lot closer in age based on their appearance. And I like the fact that they didn't go like super moe with, with Saki and that they kept her as like, hell yeah, I'm going to break your kneecaps and take your bike. I'm the daughter of anarchy, bitch. <laughs> we're going to name our band. What, what was it? Like super extreme stank girls. Super. Ex- yeah. Super extreme stank girls or something like, I like that, by the way, when Saki writes that it's not in chalk, it's in graffiti. No, that's, that's a great touch. <laughs> like, of course the biker girl would write in graffiti, so. Uh, that's all I've got to say. Alright, uh, Noah. Um, yeah, I, I want to give all props to Don Bennett as, because uh, the thing I wrote on this, and I think this was the first notes I wrote when watching the dub was, she sounds like she's having fun. Because she really does sound like she's having just... the. I think she's the first zombie that we see in the show. She's just... She's not even, like, hamming it up. It's like she's actually become a zombie. And it's the kind of thing where, like, I don't even know how you would practice something like that. But whatever it is, I'm giving full props to Dawn for playing Tay really well throughout all of those parts of the show. And they didn't... Technically, they didn't even have to dub it. Like, they could have technically just kept the Japanese audio. And I don't know how many people would have known the difference, but... I'm glad that Dawn is doing a good job in this, and I, I hope that when they throw her into the recording booth and tell her for an hour, okay, just make zombie noises, that she's having the time of her life. Either that or they're just recording her waking up in the morning, and that's just how people sound when they first wake up. So as for Caitlin's uh, voice on this, um, I agree. It, uh, her voice uh, in this sounded a whole lot like her, or it reminded me a bit of her retory voice from Show by Rock. Um, kind of using that pissed off vocal tick with a lower register without really getting super angry. Um, like knowing the kind of um, archetype that she's playing, this archetypal archetypal biker gang character, I was a little worried they might go the whole, fuck you Sasuke, ore, and fucking sick your fucking attitude kind of voice. But th- they don't do that. They keep her into... God, I got that reference. <laughs> I think you were the one who showed me that in the first place. I love that video so much. So, yeah. But no, they didn't do that. Because like I said at the beginning, Jade's uh, direction for all of her actors seems to be play up the uh, emotional vulnerability of the characters more and don't ham it up to an extreme that when we get to parts where you're supposed to actually care about the characters, you can't anymore. So Caitlin's interpretation of it is she's really extreme in the sense of, like, I, I don't need to take directions from anyone and... Why am I here? And I'm not taking your fucking attitude. But it's it's a little sense that she, she doesn't really have anywhere to go. And she almost seems at some points to get a visceral delight out of messing with society by being a zombie. Like, she, she even at one point says that, like, I, I look sexy in her when she gets her makeup put on. So, yeah. Caitlyn's entire persona is always entertaining to watch because I mean, I've seen her play a wide range of different female characters before. And this is one that... I'm really glad that she got to really go all out with this kind of voice. I'm not really sure what else I would have done to improve it. Like, I'm trying to think, like, what else could have I done to make it better? Do I have any critiques on this? And no, this this may honestly be my favorite performance of the cast that we're going to talk about is Caitlin's just mad to the walls, Saki. All right. Uh, Jamal? <coughs> Okay, so with Ty, there's not really much to go off of Don. I like the way that she kind of emotes what little Ty has to work with. I also <laughs> I also like how she just manages to like, chow different grunts and everything. Like, what I want to know is, what does she do when she Ty chews on everything? That's what I want to know. 
Like, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you mean like what she did in the booth to get that vocal effect? Yeah, because I'm pretty sure the engineers would not be happy if she chewed on a pop filter. To <laughs> mm. uh, Don, you're getting too into character. <laughs> get get the cords out of your mouth. You've already hey, chewed through five of them. She's probably buying that an apple or something. But anyway, let's get to character the alpha right now. <laughs> actually, no. They got. They actually just went down to a morgue in uh, Dallas and they bring her a real human arm. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, by the way, your uh, theory of. She, Method acting. By the way, your theory of she might be human just fucking with us is kind of debunked because, for God's sakes, her head pops off in episode two. For all we know, it's a volleyball that looks like her head and she just tucks her head into her you shirt. You can really see it pop off. Taya Yamada receive. Shut up, we will, Noah. We will, we will, we will not, we will not give up on our ridiculous theories until they are proven canonically wrong. All right. As for Caitlyn, it's like Marvel. You can't tell me they're dead if I don't see exactly. a body. Uh, as for Caitlyn, Caitlyn was impressive. Like, when I first heard her speak in episode two, it was like I was. It was like. Going back to the old days where I started to watch anime again, and I got her confused with Carly Clickenbeard. Like, she actually, to me, started sounding like Carly Clickenbeard again. And I thought it was very impressive. Like, especially with all the angry moments. Because you don't see Caitlyn as a lot of angry characters. Mm-hmm. Probably took on that Twitter experience and just chowed in the booth, you know? Like, just her being vocal, with, but still being professional. It's I like we're talking about Caitlyn Glass right now because her birthday was this weekend and I just want to give a shout out to her. Happy birthday, Caitlyn! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Yeah. In twenty minutes, it'll be one day until mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think I think this is probably the highest praise I can give her. Like it was really worth my standout performances. Like. Caitlyn is just that impressive of an actress. Like, she she really has returned to form. Kudos. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm I'm largely in agreement. Uh, I'll talk about Tay for a minute, because Tay 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 might be my favorite character because she's Yay. just weird. She's just inexplicable, and I find that very very amusing. We got a good idea now about what kind of girl Amon's into. Look, I like weird shit, son. <laughs> what do you What do you mean? What? What? Oh, you haven't met my girlfriend. You've been to Boston. I'm no. I have. She's really nice. I have, but I have it. So. <laughs> Dumb, but no, I'm agree. Like when everyone's saying, "Oh, Saki's best girl," I, I was gonna jump in and say, "Tay's best girl." So I, it sounds like we're tied two for two now. <laughs> Saki is very good, though. Um, she is. Uh, I, I, I am enjoying what Dawn's doing with Tay. Obviously, she does not have a lot to do. It is a lot of, it's a lot of zombie noises. Um, but she is clearly like she's clearly having a lot of fun there. Um, there's like variety to it, if that makes sense, which I appreciate. It doesn't just feel like the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, she's taking this seriously, which I, I as as an enthusiast of occasional enthusiast of zombie related media, I appreciate that. There's a lot of bad zombie movies, a lot of very very boring low budget zombie movies. Don't watch them. Um, so I appreciate the effort involved. Um, well, let's talk, let's talk about Caitlyn, mm-hmm. who's just great here. She yeah. is, uh, I, like, I'm gonna, like, I, I, I share the same feeling a lot of you guys do. This is not the kind of role I think of of Caitlyn. When I think of Caitlyn, uh, she tends to, even if she's playing characters who are kind of loud, they're usually loud in the way that, like, Miria from Bacchano is loud, where, like, mm. she's ridiculous, but she's a comedy character. There's no, like anger or violence in that performance here however she, she is the leader of a biker gang she will fuck you up if you cross her <laughs> do not do that and she sells mm-hmm. that she sells that really well um oh, i think my favorite moment is when they're arguing over names and she's she's written out like she's written out this like big string of kanji that's something like poison scorpion something or other and at the end she very proudly announced it's pronounced Juliet. <laughs> and I no, she she said it was pronounced Joe Arc. There we are. Thank you, Joe Arc. Thank you. Oh it's yeah, it's Joe Arc. Arc, and it's like that's that's funny. I like she, that. She's metal as fuck. <laughs> it's like 
Yes, we'll be called Joan of Arc, but I'll specifically uh, pick the writing of it that just includes all like the nasty foul biker language I want. It's like it's it's a really good it's a really good delivery of a line. I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, she's she's very funny. She she interacts. I, I like her. I like her interactions with Sakura's actress a lot. I like her interactions with the other characters. She's just an absolute delight here. I'm so happy Caitlin got to play this role. It's something that she. It's a sort of role like I feel like she doesn't get to play these kind of characters, even though she's clearly so good at that. So I don't. If even if this doesn't like get to lead to more of this in the future, I'm happy we have this one a lot. I'm so mad right Why? now. <laughs> Why? So on my Discord, uh, one of my our friends, uh, Stryker, made a joke. And she posted a picture of Keo. Then she posted a picture of Reagan. Be careful of who you make fun of in middle school. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't unsee that now. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh... She also had something like the other day. It's, um... What was it? She can't hear the phrase loser in her head without imagining it being Yurio screaming. <laughs> loser! Uh, Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, no, good performances. I'm very happy with them. Uh, are we ready to move on to the next segment? Can, can we make Saki the new oh, uh, the new mascot for Philadelphia instead? The, the new... No, Gritty is a <laughs> national treasure. You will not slander look, him. Look, look, the inevitable fist fight between Saki and Gritty will be amazing, but I'm not sure the city of Philadelphia will survive. I mean, it's the city of brotherly love, so I, I, I can't... Do you I, understand that Gritty literally... <laughs> Noah, Gritty is literally a rejected It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode come very to much. life. It, Gritty is a very appropriate mascot for that city. Like, that's... <laughs> Like, his mythos is that he was unearthed from construction around the hockey stadium and likes to eat hot dogs. Well, well so- He has a mythos! Okay. So, so, he also has a birthday and a death date, too, if that's correct. I'm gonna come and kick your ass in the honor and name of my lord and savior, Gritty. I look forward to that. And, <sighs> and that's gonna be okay, because Red Wings are going all the way this year anyway. <laughs> your team is awful <laughs> this know, year! Shut up. Welcome, I mean, welcome. mine's Good not lord, any the better. The Lions but... are better! Well, welcome to Hockey Talk, where we talk about hockey. <laughs> all hail the Tampa Bay Lightning! Second best team in the NHL! I'm not even a hockey fan, and I know Panthers suck. <laughs> Yes, you do. Oh. Maybe I'll just uh, no. I won't even root for major leagues this year. I'll just ro- I'll just root for the Griffins. That's minor speaking, league for you, uh, local there... people. Speaking of, I don't have a minor have leagues. A good segue for this. <laughs> speaking, speaking of, of the minor fucking, leagues, Kotaro. <laughs> for, I mean, for, we have so- for our next section. You can do this, Amon. You can do this. We're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> Something, something, minor league hockey saga is a small prefecture no one cares about. Anyways, um, up next, we have the man without whom none of this would have been necessary. Uh, Kotaro, the manager of the group. Uh, Baba Rumiano's anime soda, if you will. <laughs> he wears a very nice jacket. And but Squid. So and, and squid. squid. Uh, oh, yeah, he, he always has squid in his shirt pocket. Because uh, zombies like squid, apparently. Dried squid. Uh, but we also, you know, we're not just talking about him. We have a bonus character. In addition to all these zombie idols he has, he also has a zombie dog yes. named Romero. Yes, we actually have an anime with Frank and Weenie in it. Indeed. And, uh, and, uh... <laughs> I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say, is Kotaro that one guy from the Castlevania show? No, worse than that, he's Tim that Burton. Makes all the, the zombie animals. Oh, with the with the pug. Yeah, he's that's him. <laughs> he's that guy. Godbrand, well, what is that? What's the Viking's Godbrand. name? Godbrand, there isn't anything you'd kill, fuck, or make a boat out of. <laughs> so wait, so, so Ca- Castlevania, Ca- Castlevania was written by Warren Ellis, you say? I wouldn't have guessed. Anywho, um, so yes, we have uh, Kotaro and Romero. Uh, Megan, did you have any predictions for these characters? I actually did have predictions for Romero. <laughs> um. 
Uh, so every as everyone knows, the best man to play the dog at Funimation is Chris Guerrero. <laughs> he was the dog in uh, the Royal Tutor. I'm gonna get to Kotaro next because I kind of want to do something about him. Uh, I also had this as Romero because I mean, hey, if your last name is a dog character, what better than Clifford Chapin? Ouch. Our first name. I'm gonna get shot next time at Funimation. Cl- Clifford the Big Red Chapin. <laughs> oh my god, when Andrew and Lilac were in the city together, Andrew took a picture of a giant Clifford puff. She and said, Hey, Cliff, it was great to run into you in the city today. <laughs> oh boy. I was gonna say, even though technically anime Clifford the Big Red Dog was played by Damon Mills. Um, Thunder Daddy, that's my hentai name. Um, <laughs> that was a magical day in the chat. Um, what show was this? Uh, oh, we were talking about David Wald's character in Kakarillo. We called him Thunder Daddy. Oh. And we, we've had it. Uh, so, and I think I think literally Noah sent to him, Hey, David Wald, if you ever need a hentai alias, go with this. Oh. Um, and he was like, oh, sweet, thanks. Um, but Kot- uh, Kotaro Tatsumi... Uh, my biggest fear was this. I never wanted an, uh, like, certain actors get paired up playing Mamoru Miyano characters in English because everybody, I think, needs, feels like, hey, this character's played by Mamoru Miyano. He probably needs to have a distinctive voice. So I went with, uh, both of these actors have played Mamoru Miyano characters. I went with one that's very obvious. No. And I went with one that would be not very obvious, so my actual obvious choice was J. Michael Tate. Mm. Oh. You know what? Yeah, I'm not gonna hold that against you because, like you said, it, it it was a it was a real possibility. Yeah, uh, he because he was his uh, match for Tokyo Ghoul as a uh, Skiyama, and then my other one was actually Damon Mills. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I can because see that because he was his he was his character in Akka, Prince Swan. And I, as one of the five people who watched Akka, understand that. <laughs> yeah, I saw Akka. It's on the two watch list. Akka's great. Akka is, like, one of my favorite Sh- animes. So. Prince Schwan's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Prince Schwan's an asshole. <laughs> oh, this... Prince Schwan gets the greatest fuck you, one of the best fuck yous of all time in anime. Oh, yeah. This show's sounding better and better already. Oh no, if you've ever wanted to see one woman pull a political middle finger, watch Akka. I, I have been missing that in my life recently, so yes, I would love to see that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd also love to see uh, voice actors for uh, the evil sunglass wearing manager and his dog. I see, what did I put for, okay, for um, Kataro, um, I knew that, I, I figured that he would have um, more of a tenor, higher voice for a male vo- character. And um, I had Stephen Fu put in the spot. Uh, I've been seeing him kind of like show up more and more in uh, random shows that I've been seeing with this voice that I thought the vo- he's got the right voice for what I want. I don't know if I've heard him play such a crazy kind of performance yet, though. So this could be like the opportunity where the director says, OK, Stephen, we're finally letting you off your chain. You're not playing put upon uh, salary murderers anymore. You're not playing. Um, um, Chris Waycamp's bitch anymore. No, you are finally going to be the Idol Master Manager. Go have some fun. <coughs> Excuse me, he was not Chris Waycamp's bitch in Kakarillo. He was I his apologize. Buddy. So, and then as for Romero, um, this is going to sound incredibly lazy, but the on, the only other anime zombie dog character who I could think of was Chuck from Pan and Stocking with Garter Belt. <laughs> He was, and that was a voice that also didn't really say anything, but just made lots of grunts and growls, and I'm sure Ian Sinclair had a great time voicing him, so I thought, well, you know what, let's let him be Zombie Dog once again. Wait, I thought it was Joel Mc... Oh, wait, no, Joel McDonald was brief. Was brief. He was the curly-haired, I want to bang, uh, panty. <laughs> okay, to be fair, I've never actually watched Panty and Stocking. <laughs> Well, when really? the, we'll tell you when the sequel comes out, they'll give you a good excuse to watch it. Ha 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 ha! That's the best joke all night. You're a comedy genius, Noah. There's like ten people out there who are just tearing their computer to shreds with their teeth right now. 
There are ten people booking their flights to Michigan to beat your ass at I, I just like to tell you that I, I live uh, over in Detroit, and um, he, um, my address is not the one that you've seen in videos before. <laughs> uh, uh, Jamal. Uh, yes, go ahead. Okay, so for Koto, I was very well aware it was Mamoru Miyano and... I mean, of course, we all know who the real typecast would have been, but I thought it would have been a bit too old and not blonde enough, so I went to step down and... I, I went to step down and I also picked Damon Mills. And because Kotaro... Kotaro was kind of difficult to predict, to be honest, but I had, I had Anthony Bowling. I figured, you know, Kotaro kind of shots a lot of times, and I've been watching Anthony the space... What is it? Space Battleship to me soon. <laughs> Woo, is he fly off the wall sometimes? But I also had Jeremy Inman because, you know, it's a Mamu Miano role. Romero, on the other hand, comes with a little story. Well, first off, I had Marissa Lenti. But my second prediction, because he said in the Let's Play that he would be Voice of the Dark this season, I was like, this can't be a coincidence. It's got to be Alejandro Saab. <laughs> Intriguing. Um, let's see, who did I have? Uh, for Kotaro, um, he might have been a little old for it, but I thought Ian Sinclair would have been fun here. I feel like he, he, he excels at those kind of, like, amped up loud characters a lot. Um, I also thought uh, Sunny Strait, well, who also probably would have sounded a little too old, but I think also would have been fun. I got a little bit of a, um, it's not exact, but there's a, I got a little bit of a Koro Sensei vibe, just in terms of, like, kind of semi-antagonistic leader person trying to get people together, although he's Guitar is not as nice as Goro Sensei. Um, so they might be fun. And of course, uh, for Romero, uh, th I thought there was only one appropriate choice. Because uh, as we all know, a few years ago, George Romero, the original Romero, sadly passed away. And so who better to voice the dog than George Romero's ghost? <laughs> <laughs> now, now you might say to yourself, Amon, shouldn't George Romero's zombie voice the dog? And I'd say that's ridiculous. Zombies aren't real. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you haven't gone this this deep since you proposed the actual actor for Eraserhead, voice Eraserhead, My Hero Academia. Uh, did you know that you are the wind beneath my no, wings? No, no. You, you, you can't see it, but I'm like waving my hands over my head in victory right now. <laughs> uh. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> zombies aren't real. Zombies aren't, zombies aren't real. Goblins, yeah, however. Oh. Troll two, troll two is a documentary. Don't let anyone tell you different. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, like, how they're eating her, and then they're going to eat me. <laughs> oh my god! I just pity whoever's going to edit this episode, and now they have to come up with a visual for the ghost of Romero. Look, just get a photo of George Romero. We spent the last like 20 years looking like everyone's grandpa, which like he's got these like huge thick glasses. Just put like a blue Photoshop filter. Yeah, exactly. Over it. That's how you make like, a ghost. Yeah, <laughs> you've also got to have it like floating as well, and. You're putting way too much effort into this here, Noah. Oh, anywho. In actuality, uh, Kataro is played by Rico Fajardo, and Romero is in fact played by Alejandro Saab. Uh, Rico, you know from such plural, uh, such shows as Assassination Classroom, Gangster, and Nambakana, because Happy Fucking New Year, everybody! <laughs> Happy Fucking New Year! Indeed. Happy Fucking it's not even here. Thanksgiving yet. I don't Fuck care. off. Shut your whore mouth, well, no, after, clear. After, after I saw he had been cast in this role, that, that scene immediately popped in my head, and I was like, it's so obvious. Of course you cast Rico in this role. <laughs> You're who welcome. Else, who else would you cast? Um, and uh, Alejandro Saab, uh, you know, for many shows, such as including uh, Yoka, Nanbaka, and The Royal Tutor. Uh, Megan, would you like to start us off with your thoughts on these performances? As we all learned at Anime Fest 2018, rap in Rico Fajardo is a thing that exists. What also exists is the world's worst white boy beatboxing, Andrew. <laughs> I wonder if that video was up. No, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm looking at your life meter. You've only got two hearts left. I'm, I'm good. Just go cook something out in the wilderness. I'm pretty sure the Bacoblins will leave you alone to cook Here's a steak. Um, 
<laughs> no, but my biggest fear going into Zombie Land Saga's dub is that they would try to have Rico or whoever was to play Kotaro be a one to one match of Mamoru Miyato, which is the last thing I wanted. Also, part of me was thinking, like, I've watched enough stuff with Mamoru Miyano in it to know he's fluent in English. I was gonna be like, would they pull the thing where they just sent him talking in English to them? You silly, Megan. <laughs> Funimation doesn't have Mamoru Miyano money. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Not even after they got bought out. I'm gonna say this, though. If it finds out that that answer tomorrow is we co pro the new Fruits Basket anime, you're gonna eat your words. <laughs> Well, I mean, we got Fruits Basket, but, uh, at least. Hey, hey, that's a good show. No, no, Fuck I, you. Um, it is. You're right. It's a great anime. It's a it great is. manga. I'm ready I, to watch I, a new... I'm ready to watch a new generation cry their just, eyes out. Just like how, Ro just how like, Kotaro makes these girls probably cry their eyes out after. <laughs> Literally cries them out. Literally. No, I, I really like that Rico has a lot of energy and a lot of just... I don't know, it feels like he just has an absolute, like, disdain for these girls. <laughs> like, he feels like some guy on the internet who's like, You are all so dumb! <laughs> like, I think one of my favorite moments that really sold me on the show is in the first episode where Sakura's like, So how did I become a zombie? You ever watched a zombie movie? Yeah? Though so there's your answer! <laughs> See, I, see, the, the part like, I love about this is that zombie movies very notoriously often give no explanation for how the zombification works. It mm -hmm. just does. It just does. Like, it, it changes so many uh, things from every movie. Um, I want to say that part of me thinks that... Uh, <laughs> you guys have seen the movie Zombieland, oh, yes. right? No. You should, because it's fucking it, great. I think um, it's on Netflix. Zombieland is one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, part of me thinks, like, I feel like uh, Woody Harrelson's character is being channeled a bit through Kotaro. <laughs> because Woody Harrelson's character is kind of an asshole the entire I movie. I definitely see that. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Like, I'm sorry, one of my favorite all-time moments is just Woody Harrelson crying on the floor and he just grabs a chunk of money, Bill Murray's money and just wipes his <laughs> tears. Like that's a legitimate thing that happens. <laughs> that movie also gives me one of my one of my favorite lines. Mr. Murray, is there anything you regret? Garfield, maybe. <laughs> now I think about it, that that was an interesting twist because we've got a show here where the characters are use makeup to hide the fact that they're zombies. I, this is in Zombie Land where he uses like, makeup to look like a he, zombie. A zombie so he can blend in and not get and bitten. How does that work oh. out for him? Uh no, he he it actually does work. He only dies I think cuz he gets yeah, shot. Yeah, because or one of the because Woody Harrison thinks he's No, not him. That was one of the girls who think No, was it the main character who kills him? I've not seen Zombie Land in a while, so I need to look anyway, it up. But, he, you got fucking shot, um, son. I love In medical terms, you got fucking shot, son. Um do you've got the horn, the one that makes people poop? Um but, uh, no, I, I, like I said, my biggest fear going into this was that they would oh. make them be a one-to-one -to, -one to Mamoru Miyano's performance, to which it has a lot of the same energy, but not the same vocal tone, not the same cadence. Uh, I think Rico actually plays Kotaro a little bit more towards his own natural voice than anything, because I can hear a lot of Rico's more softer characters like Leon from Garo in it a little bit. But this guy's also a total asshole. And I love how much Rico gets that sold across in his performance. And the other aspect I like is that Kotaro himself puts on a face for other people. Because in episode four, he's talking to this pharmaceutical company. And he just pours on that, well, you know, we're just trying to revive Saga and very... I can't wait to work with you. Very businessy attitude. And yet he's so demeaning, which is my other favorite theory that one day the girls are going to eat him. Uh, but that being said, uh, thumbs up to Rico. Let him do more characters like this. Uh, like, in the same vein as the guy from Nambaka screaming, but a little bit more dialed down. So. Yeah. That's, um... 
if any of you uh, who are watching this episode have seen any of our uh, A-Fest vlogs from 2018, you'll know that Rico uh, can rap. Rico can rap very well. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we talked a lot earlier about um, they may or may not eventually dub some of the songs, but I really hope that they let Rico beatbox for episode two because I want to hear that so badly. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, Rico's got... Um, it took me a little while, actually, to get into him because, again, when I started the show, I was expecting the acting and the writing to favor more comedy than uh, anything else. Um, Rico's first episode is just kind of angry, it sounds like. He's just kind of shouting at Sakura, and we're not quite sure what his deal is supposed to be entirely, except that he's just supposed to be, like, the goofy manager character who gets things going. But uh, he does manage to balance out the manager portion of it and being a crazed fanatic who we're not even quite sure what his deal is yet. Like, has he been hired by someone to revitalize the industry? Is he just like a big fan who's trying to revitalize his hometown? Is he just an asshole? We don't quite know yet. But what matters is that Rico is funny. Rico is incredibly funny and is having a lot of fun where he's just... Every episode's like a different version of good morning, ladies, or... He's, like, super excited in episode three for their gorilla style performance. Like, let's do this! And then it immediately switches to, okay, let's go, everybody out. Let's get set up here. He's just having, he sounds like he's having a real ball. And I'm glad that we're not supposed to like him because you can laugh with a character who's an asshole. I'm not, okay, I'm not entirely sure that the theory that he's a zombie himself is going to hold up, but I'll be personally very happy if that actually does happen. But one thing I do want to say is that his Entire attitude towards the girls has led me to believe that the show, on a deep meta-commentary level, is really supposed to be about how terrible the idol industry can be for certain people. But we'll get, we can get to that a little bit more near the final thoughts section. But if this is supposed to be meta-commentary about how idols are actually treated, then, well, let's just say that we need, to, we need to have a closer look at some managers out there in Japan. But maybe I'm just reading too much into this. I am not reading too much into Alejandro's performance, though, because... Boy needs a cough drop, and I'm sure he's having fun being a dog. Oh, I forgot to talk about the There's fucking dog. There's not much dog. to talk about. He, <laughs> he, he's, he's a dog. He gets a comp. Good job, Alejandro. You bort good. Ryuji has done a good job training you. Yeah. <laughs> he's had about a combined 20 seconds of total vocal time, one time eating a squid, and another time just scaring the girls. You know what? If you're going to if you're going to have a, a no character character to pay homage to a famous horror director, then this is the way to do that. Um, yeah, no, nothing bad to say except I'm glad Alejandro gets to have fun in the recording booth, and I'm really glad that Rico gets to be let off his leash for this for the show as well. Uh, Jamal, uh, this is probably gonna get cut, but before I say anything. I tried to find a video of Rico beatboxing that's not for my channel, and apparently he was in a Chuck E. Cheese commercial. <laughs> oh, he was! Because I remember Genie Toronto makes fun of him for it. <laughs> Genie went to a Chuck E. Cheese when she was visiting her family. She's like, I can't wait to see Rico Fajardo on the big screen. <laughs> also, I'm, I've never heard you laugh like that before. <laughs> Come on, uh, come on, Noah. I mean, come on, Jamal. He's just following in the great footsteps of Chris Sabat. <laughs> uh, I'm debating whether to cut that or not. But anyway, so yeah, uh, Rico. Well, Rico was impressive as coach, though, because like, and I know Megan said that they were glad it was not a one for one translation. It was to me, it was more like seventy five percent because he he easily. Goes with Mamu's flow, like with his inflections and speaking patterns, but at least he doesn't go with his tone of like speaking English, you know. Like, even if Mamu can speak English pretty good, he doesn't go with that English that they portray in the show. Like, he manages to keep everything very consistent, and I, I, did, <laughs> I didn't think he'd go that deep before. I'm like, is this really Rico Fajardo? Like, and y'all know me, I freaking loved him in that barker, so I'm su surprised here, like. But he manages, but like I said, he manages to keep everything even, and this is also a testament to Caitlyn, I swear the guy almost called her Caitlyn Glass. Caitlyn Barr is a writer, uh, 
because I could swear in episode two when he's teaching Sakura how to move like an idol. He's like, keep it up, keep it up, that's good. Keep it up. I could swear I've heard that in a rap song before. I just can't remember where, like that rhythm. Yeah, but he channels all aspects of my move very good. And Alejandro Saab is the dog. Like you said, we don't get to hear much of him. But he did he did manage to channel Ryuji for that performance. And I, th I thought it was pretty cool. Like, bark, bark. I don't know which one of you is doing that. That was me. That was very good. Damn, that was impressive. <laughs> well, when you live with a dog, you pick up a few things. That makes sense. <coughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I'm in agreement. Uh, Rico is really good in this role. He's he is just having so much fun. Uh. Oh, gotta go. The sights aren't gonna see themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just... How much do you know about Saga? A lot. How many people live here? A lot. That's not a number. And? <laughs> it's small. <laughs> or I think I think the best definition of this character is, uh, you're not very bright, are you? <laughs> he's, he's just so mean. Now, luckily, the, yeah. the show does get laughs at his expense a lot of the time. Oh no, he I, I I feel like you you as the audience are supposed to empathize with the girls. He's it was yeah. look it was very satisfying when Saki punched him in the stomach in episode four. <laughs> I really enjoyed that moment. Yeah. I was like, ah, this is good. Yeah, you don't tell Kate the glass what to do. Exactly. <laughs> in Soviet <laughs> saga, Caitlin talks to you. Uh, he, he he's just a lot of fun playing this character. He's just he, he amps it up really well. He's just he's very just wonderfully obnoxious. Like he's just he's just a lot of fun to listen to. The like and this, I, I agree. This is very something where I think like the the writing and direction shine through with the performance really well. He has just such wonderful lines and he delivers. I really like the bit where like he's just rushing everyone to the van in episode three when the cops are there. Just like go 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 get it get it get it get it go go go. It's just, he's he's yeah. very funny. That was one of the parts where I realized he really did manage to rate the Babu side of him. Like, cause it's like I almost heard Babu one to one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Rico Rico is just delightful in this. I'm enjoying him a lot. He's 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 up there in performance of the show, and uh, Alejandro plays a good zombified boy. He's a good duck. Oh. I, I I enjoyed the inexplicable shot of like him and Tay hanging out where they're both wearing like prisoner outfits. Yeah. I don't really know what's. I don't really. I don't. I, I, I don't quite know how seriously you're supposed to take that, but it was a fun shot. Um. Yeah. No. Good performances. Thumbs up, guys. Now, are we ready for our final character? Oh boy, mm. this is where yes. the gloves will come off. I'm afraid. Oh boy. Oh boy! <laughs> this will uh, be fun. So, finally, we have the one, the only, Miss Sakura Minamoto, our uh, our truck hit Lee heroine herself. She had such such simple dreams that she wanted to achieve. <laughs> and was... Not everyone can fully achieve a Honoka. Well, you know, it helps when people obey the speed limit on your road. <laughs> Not on her. <laughs> um... Look, it's not her fault someone decided to play Crazy Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> or because it was a truck, is it was it more of a twisted metal type of day? <laughs> On that note, Megan, do you have any do you have any predictions for who would play Sakura? Because she got hit by a truck, I should have totally fucking put <laughs> Brent Apple or Juliet Simmons. Um we're going there, huh? If you understand, if you understand the Juliet Simmons one, I will be impressed because then you will actually know what the phrase "getting heoried" means. No, so my actual predictions for Sakura are actually Brittany Lauda and Amanda Lee. Uh, I Brittany Lauda was said she was a fan of the show. I figured that this might be because she was on the show. Um, and also, B, I also kind of went for two people who I figured could do death metal screaming. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, and I figured, hey, Brittany Loud has screamed a lot in Seven Mortal Sins. What's the worst that could happen? 
And then obviously I did Amanda Lee because I figured, hey, Amanda Lee's a really great singer and she's done some screaming stuff in her songs, uh, so she could take it. All right, uh, Noah. Well, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna steal Megan's prediction. Well, not actually not steal it so much because I actually did put Bryn April as my guest for Sakura. Um, her Japanese seiyu gives her this a uh, very cute affectation that even in sounding very freaked out and insistent that we're zombies, we can't be idols, what is wrong with you kind of attitude. She's still got that adorable moe voice to her that Bryn is very, very good at, at doing. And again, because I had assumed that they would be playing up more the comedic uh, aspects of the show in the dub, um, I thought someone with a more cartoonish voice like Bryn has would be a perfect fit for this role. So that's, uh, and, and I didn't have her down as a prediction for anywhere else, so that's where I put her. All right, uh, Jamal. All right, so I had three for Sakura, uh, two of them being Monica Rion and Madeline Morris, because they could both do high pitch very easily, and I may or may not have played a little pun with Monica. Oh, because she's Sakura. Yep. But my first prediction was kind of unusual, because when I saw the show, this was literally the first thing that popped in my head, and I think I know why. I put Macy Ann Johnson. Who, if you've seen, uh, she was in a little show called uh, Magical Girl Racing Project. She plays Hardcore Alice, and her, her avatar, she's kind of undead. <laughs> Like, literally, you could kill her, she'll come back to life. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. So I, so, but I figured, you know, someone new to this, like, it'd be a nice shot. Maybe something for her to cut her teeth. I it is a Jade Saxton dub, so. I thought she would want with someone new, at least. Mm. Alright, and uh, for my part... Uh, who did I, I thought uh, Jill Harris would be fun in this role, in part because I like oh. I like Jill Harris, and uh, I like seeing her in things. Please tell me you didn't make a Fuku reference just now. I, that was not specifically a Fuku re- a Fuku reference, but the fact that she has been in like she can sing and has been in musicals before uh, was an influence on that. But mostly just like I like Jill Harris and I like when she's in stuff. I like she, I think she I think she's funny. Uh, but... Regardless, I'm still proud of you, Oman, for unintentionally making a Fuku reference. What can I say? It's what I do. Uh, but, in this case, all guesses are wrong. Uh, in actuality, Sakura is being played by Brina Valencia, uh, who you would know for such shows as Bacano, Black Butler, and My Hero Academia. Uh, Megan, would you uh, start us off? What did you think of Brina's performance? So when I heard it was going to be Brina, I was actually really surprised. Um, she definitely plays Sakura a lot mm. lower than her seiyuu. Which, it's it's a really good performance, but it took me a really long time to get into her performance. I don't, like, I don't want to call it bad because it's not. It's just very different from the Seiyu, and I think it works. I think the weird thing I get is at the beginning of the episodes, and it's the only thing I don't like, is that she kind of gets a little valley girl. Hmm. And that betrays Sakura's character to me a little bit. And because Sakura's not a ditzy valley girl. She's just kind of this girl who's trying her best. And she doesn't know what she's got to do, but she's putting her whole heart into it. And she just wants to chase this feeling of being up on stage. And she doesn't know who she really is other than she's the first person to be awake. Um, I do like that the show kind of like shits on her sometimes. Yeah. Uh, there's a moment in episode three, I think, where she tells everybody, no, we need to stop and go back inside, and Yugiri cuts her, like, bitch slaps her <laughs> yeah. in the face and goes, how dare you, and gives her the speech, and I think that's, like, one of my favorite moments of the show, because it always kind of, um, counteracts idol anime. Um, I just don't know if they put her there, because Brina's kind of the most well-known person for singing at Funimation. But And again, it's not a bad performance. It's just very, very different from the Seiyuu. And I can see this being the one performance that I think a lot of people would go to nitpick as the, 
Well, L anime needs to sound, and the dub needs to sound like the the exact copy of the seiyuu type people. And I can see why they would latch on to this over any of the other performances. It's not bad, it's just different. And I personally like it. I think it's great. I think that Brina is bringing a lot of life to Sakura's care performance. In the moments where Sakura needs to be sarcastic and stuff. Again, the only nitpick I have is that in the beginning of the last time on Zombie Land Saga type things, she can tend to go like, and then we kind of did this like type of voice. And that bothers me a little bit because that does not sound like Sakura at all. Even when Sakura is on stage being kind of the person i'm number one on stage well, i kind of uh, i kind of compared it to uh, you, you remember from yuri on ice the scenes where we get like the the 2d version of yuri where he's explaining the rules of ice skating to the audience right or when he's like hey this is my life and stuff but yeah but it never sounded like yuri's character had changed to me mm. Um, also being now that you say that, the only thing I could think of is my name is Yuri Kotsky, my life is a dumpster <laughs> fire. Um, man, I wish that would have got off the ground. Um, but, that, that was a funny there. abridged, but, uh, I under I, I, I get what yeah. you're saying, though. Um, yeah, to, to, uh, to piggyback off of that, there's, uh, there, there's certainly an expectation that, uh, the English voice actress has to have a similar voice to the Japanese seiyuu. And, yeah, th they did not decide to go with that. Like, they very intentionally decided not to do that in this show. Which, I might be a little biased in uh, my initial reaction, because I had not too long ago just finished Snow White with the red hair. So, hearing Brina's voice again for a very different kind of character, just, it took me a while to uncouple my thoughts of, huh, show your has a really different uh, life after uh, marrying Prince Zed, but uh, know, maybe she'll have a happy life now. But um, I think that was something that I, ca I can side with after the first episode, because like I said, Jade was trying to get to the emotional core of the show, so if you have a character that sounds identical to the Japanese seiyuu, it's going to sound more shrill and more moe, for, throughout the rest of the show, but the show favors the emotions that you're supposed to feel from, like, the difficulties vital, practicing, the uncertainty about being a zombie, and, like, why are we even doing this, but also uniting as friends, and Brina has top-tier acting in drama roles like this, so I think it's something that you may have to get used to if you're super used to the Japanese, it certainly took me a little while, but I think by about episode two, She's gotten to where she can stand toe to toe with the Japanese seiyuu, and aside from just sounding a little bit older than the Japanese seiyuu, she still sounds like a high school student. It's just as good as the Japanese, just a different kind of Japan, a different kind of voice. All right, uh, Jamal. Yeah, so I was kind of surprised it was Brita, only because the last couple of years she'd been out doing LA stuff, so I. Never really had a peg to my mind. Like I even did the same thing in Heat of Matsuri, where I thought I, she was the last person I expected to be. But honestly, I thought it kind of worked. I mean, I can see where Mega is coming from, but pretty much a lot of it is. Remember, this is a parody of the idol genre, so I can mm -hmm. kind of take that with a grain of salt, especially those recaps, because those recaps are faster to the point and. So being a vagabond, kind of heightens, it kind of heightens her voice a bit when she has to speak really fast. So probably her speaking really fast, it may sound like a fairly good accent, but I didn't really think so. Other than that, it, it really kind of fits the kind of tone the character needed because you know she's not used to this world. She doesn't remember anything from her past life. She doesn't understand where she's coming from. She's trying to adjust and. I think those kind of characters Brina can play pretty easily. Is it? It's not really much of a standout performance, but it is when Sakura comes into it. Oh, but I think overall it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty. Like I said, it's, like I said at the top of the show, like it's not really what I expected for Brina, but it kind of blew my expectations out of the water. So hmm. yeah. <coughs> 
Oh, excuse me. Please survive, Amon. We, c we can't afford another one of you, all right? We're already not, in the red not, as it is. I'm not going to die. I just might need the lungs. Um, I could still so. hear his voice every once in a while. That's a reference yeah. I also get. Uh, anyways, um... I, I, I also enjoyed Rena's performance. Uh, I did, it, it was initially a little, having watched like a few episodes in the Japanese while I was doing predictions, it was initially a little jarring because she is so noticeably, uh, her voice is noticeably lower than the uh, Japanese say. Um, but performance-wise, actually, I, I agree. I think it's very strong. She really sells the kind of normality of Sakura, kind of like how she is in this like really absurd situation and her just kind of try and roll with it and also like oh I, I do get to do this idol thing that you know I, I think I wanted to do and I'm having fun with that part of it um <coughs> I just and, and she 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 feels very grounded in a way that I think is is uh, like a good mix for a lot of characters she she sits in contrast to the more out there characters like psyche uh, but she her enthusiasm also like she gives her an interesting contrast with like I and Junko who are also our idols but are a lot more cynical about this whole business um and I like the performance and I do I like the performance for that reason it feels uh like it feels very natural like I, and but still like you know there's a lot of enthusiasm in the whole thing like in the that first scene you really buy like oh no she she like and I being an idol is like a really big sincere dream of hers which then makes her getting hit by a truck all the more surprising <laughs> uh that will never not be funny <laughs> I just, I like, I like, I like the little, I like the little shot where you can see the front of the truck, so you can see exactly how the front of it compresses as an answer. Also, apparently, like, I think the truck has the like the the license plate saga it on does, it. Yeah. <laughs> Ironic, because if you look at the letter Sakura is holding before she hits the truck, it's addressed to ZOS Productions. <laughs> <laughs> to what? <laughs> to ZOS Productions, Zabi Land Saga. I was like, ah! God, the Easter eggs. I, I just, this is one of the few shows where you can say, I'm so glad that cute girl got hit by a truck. Pretty much. Um. <laughs> wow. I mean, if Yori and Noragami never got hit by the bus, she wouldn't have ever found her future husband, Yato. <laughs> um. if, if Yusuke Yurameshi hadn't got hit by that car, then... Well, actually, I don't know if the show would have really changed because he comes back in a couple episodes anyway. Well, they, they established if he hadn't interfered, the kid would have been fine. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so if anything, if anything it's trying to save the child is actually completely futile. Act it, it, was, it, it was just a plot device to, to, to get you the show going. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to get edited to shit and hell back. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, no, I, I enjoy I enjoy Green's performance a lot. It, it feels I feel it's a good center to uh, a lot of the story. I think since you know she's our key point character and so on, and I really enjoy it. I do. Th well, I think it is kind of jarring coming from the Japanese. I think if you sit down and just start watching this in English straight off the bat, I you know you avoid that whole problem obviously. And I think it's like a very strong performance throughout. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying I oh, didn't no, no. enjoy it. I think it's really great. <laughs> I could just see where people would be like really annoyed if they. Oh came no, hundred percent. Like I, like I had that exact same feeling watching it. Like, oh, this is a much lower voice performance than the one of the Japanese. Like it, it stuck out even to me. And I think I usually yeah. like tend not to pay attention to that aspect of it too much. But um, like I even like I think if you if you if you get around that, like it's a very solid performance, and I liked it a lot. Um, so on that note, we'd like we would like to move on to final thoughts. Yes. Yes. Megan, would you like to start us off so we can end this thing? Sure. I want to make this. I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, please watch Zombieland Saga. If you are into idol anime and if you are into horror anime, please watch it because it's a wonderful marriage of the two. Um, I I actually got like a couple of my friends who hate idol anime to watch it, and I got it. I just got a DM back that said, "Megan, what the hell? You made us watch an idol anime, and we like it." <laughs> uh, you bastards. Scared. No, and the reason I like it, too, is that it is a really nice... It's a satire of the idol culture and idol anime stuff without seeming super mean-spirited. Like, there's a lot of things like Kotaro talking about. It's like, ah, no, it's not like I can't work you girls to death. You're already <laughs> dead. Because that shit does happen to actual idols. And if you look into actual idol culture in Japan, it is terrifying. Um, Like, I think... 
just look up some some crazy idol and say you culture stories from japan it it is bad even some of the american voice actors get a lot of shit thrown at them but speaking about the show it's the dub of the show itself it is great it is a dub that is solid it's probably one of my favorite idol show dubs um it, if it keeps up its production value um, I like I said, I would if the songs get dubbed, that'll be great for people. Um, if they don't, I completely understand it's a legal reasons thing that is outside of the control of uh, the actors and writing crew. And it is, uh, I will say this though, if you actually own Love Live Sunshine, you can see it. Uh, they actually have a disclaimer about that that it is of out of the respect of their of the license holder. So if they don't do it, don't be an asshole to the cast. Please don't be an asshole to the cast. They're all really wonderful people. Uh, but that being said, please check out Zombie on Saga. It's probably one of the best shows airing this fall. Um, it's... I was gonna say it's like one of my favorite dub shows airing this fall, but one of my other favorite shows this fall is getting a dub that starts as of Wednesday of this recording. Uh, so yeah. And then my other actual favorite show of the fall doesn't have a dub at all right now, so. Too sad. <laughs> uh, Noah. Uh, in going into this, um, I was asking the question to myself, can such a Japanese-centric show that's focused on something that we don't have an American equivalent for over here be translated into English properly? And I would say after three episodes that the answer is yes, with the caveat that you know a little bit about idol uh, culture going into this. Uh, now, obviously, this isn't going on television. Like, this isn't going to be the mainstream broadcast kind of things that all, everyone needs to see. This is geared towards an otaku crowd that's already hopefully familiar with the tropes of, like, the animation turning to 3D in, like, a really jarring dance sequence or the uh, insert songs that can't be translated because we don't have the license for it. So, with that being said, what the Japanese, or, sorry, what the English crew did was honestly really commendable they kept a lot of the funny moments here which is the parts that i appreciate the most the second thing i appreciate though is that there are a lot of little touches of emotions that could have been lost if they played up heavy comedy in both directing and writing and they understood enough about what the show was going for which is good because i didn't even understand what the show was going for after the first episode that it, it, it retains that consistent tone of being an emotional show with punched up with some funny moments throughout that make it entertaining on a couple of different levels. I wouldn't say it's my favorite show of the season right now, but it is one that is very easy to watch. It is very easy going down, it's very easy on the ears, and you will most likely get a chuckle or two out of it for no other reasons than just the absurdity of watching zombies trying to be idols. So with that... Definitely give it a watch. It is, I'd say it is just as good as the Japanese. Not better, but just as good. Okay, uh, Jamal? So, when I first heard the show was announced, I was very hesitant because the director of this show is the same guy that watched the first two seasons of Sailor Moon Crystal. So, my concern here was he was going to take something and, like, just completely change things up a bit, which when I found out this was the original IP, I was glad because the show seems to be paced very well. And much like Grid Man, I have no idea where this story is going to go, but I like how the episodes have been keeping me on my toes week after week. That having been said, the dub itself was pretty much spectacular because Jade Sachs to Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin Barr. What the f... Out... <laughs> Don't ask. It's, okay. it's almost it's 1 a.m., okay. guys. We're tired. I still have the pack oh, for no. Disney. I don't know if I'd want to cut that now. So, Jade Saxon and Caitlin Bar, they've done a very, very good job tag teaming on this dub. Tia and Felicia helping out. Like, it blew my expectations out of the water, even for a Jade Saxon dub. And I really do see where they take this in the later episodes. Like, I also want to know, like, What's the end game for this? Like, because I, I thought the whole thing is saving Saga. Like, I thought Saga was coming under attack or something. I this shows how much I know about idol culture. So, like, I forget. Oh yeah, they're probably just like revitalizing it. Like, it's a Sakura quest kind of thing. And I'm not saying that because there is somebody named Sakura. <laughs> Sakura Quest Part Two: Zombie Land Saga. <laughs> 
Sakura so- Quest 2, the zombie years. Sakura so- Quest 2, electric boogaloo. Sakura <laughs> Quest 2, weekend at Bernie's yeah. edition. Oh, God. Oh. Anywho. Oh, are you done? Yeah, I'm sure. done. <clears throat> um, yeah, no, I, I, I am enjoying this show a lot. I think it's a very fun, very, like, uh, like in unique, and maybe not, like, super unique, but, like, I think it's a fun take on idol culture. I agree with Megan. I enjoy the fact that it is, like, it has, like, critique in it, but it's it seems to be made by people who do like this stuff. There's, like, a, a sincerity to it that I think stops it from ever getting, like, too mean or too bitter or something. You know, it, it never becomes, like, off-putting and anything like that, which I appreciate. Um, and I, I think it also helps, like, I think knowing a little about idol culture does help, but I do think that's still a fairly low bar to entry, which I also appreciate. Like, I don't, like, I, I know my knowledge of idol culture is, like, perfect blue and like i follow some people who are into like love live on twitter and that's really about it and i feel like even that gave me enough to like at least follow what's going on i think the dub has definitely helped with that i think this is really well performed i think it's really well written and directed i also think it's very well uh, mixed uh i was very impressed by the bit in episode four where basically the um the lady from the pharmaceutical company actually finds sakura's head and it just turns into a little horror skit for a few minutes uh i thought that was very well put together um I was very impressed by that. Uh, yeah, this is just a very this is a very strong show. <coughs> I highly recommend watching it. It's a lot of fun. It's got a little bit of something for everybody. Go go check it out. Uh, and if you would like to check it out, you can do that on Funimation.com, <coughs> where uh, if memory serves, I believe you can uh, sign up for a fourteen day free subscription, uh, a free trial to uh, try you know try this out, try out some other shows, and. Uh, you find you might you might you might like having access to all this stuff and decide to uh, keep going. But I will note if you sign up, uh, your credit card will be charged at the end of those uh, two weeks. So you know if you do want to cancel it, make sure you do that before that ends. Um, and uh, let's uh, pitch ourselves. Uh, you can find us at uh, I believe. Um, thank at you at the podcast. podcast, and that is our handle on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Twitch. I believe. Uh, so follow us all there. Mm-hmm. You can keep up to date. You're presumably watching this on our YouTube page, um, but if you're not, we're Dub Top Podcast on YouTube. Uh, please like and subscribe and follow along and watch all our videos. We really appreciate it. Um, and can don't if I, you like what we do, you can donate to our <coughs> Kofi. Yes, uh, there'll be a link for that in the description of this video. So uh, if you don't, if you want to throw us a couple of bucks, we'd happily appreciate it. Uh, and uh, let's uh, you guys um, tell us where we can find you on the internet, Megan. You can follow me at Queen Era 2. You can also hang out with me on the Funimation Discord and forums with Hardy and Andrew. You can come dunk on him, too. 126 episodes. <laughs> Counted twice in the... Okay, I did it three <coughs> times in this episode, and now Andrew will appear and tell me my wife was crap. <laughs> Who are saying this? I want you to mix in Andrew saying that, actually, into the episode. Well, can't, can't you just tell him his wife was trash? I can't, actually. <laughs> I can't anymore. You I'm not allowed. Because you will be fired. We can't actually tell him his life li- wife was trash because she's not. <laughs> uh, uh, no, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Noah Clue. Um, if you have an itching to discuss, debate, and all manner of talking about uh, animation from all around the world, that is where you can see me doing so online. And I also post pictures of my kids and um, it's you know we're coming up on Christmas now, so if you'd like to donate presents to them, then um, well, um, just hit me up and I'll give you my address. That that was shameless. I also have a YouTube channel which is Journey Traveler. Um, I've got some things planned for the end of the year um, that may may involve a little less actual scripting than I uh, that has been preventing me from doing any full videos recently. So um, bug me, please bug me on Twitter to actually produce that so that it gets done by the end of the year. Alright, uh, Jamal. You can find me on Twitter at Jamstar529. I'm on YouTube at Jamstar1. I have a blog that's just collected dust. I have a, I guess, a project in the works that should be coming out next year. I'm also an assistant editor for the Talk Podcast, and I think as of this episode, I'm 
stud for our little cyberdub season. So I do have a few secret projects on the side. Ooh. Keep your eyes peeled, listeners. Let's just say you're uh, raising one up over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> throw his pillow at Megan. <coughs> Wow, I didn't know uh, you could throw a pillow all the don't way across Don't worry. The state. Don't worry. I've got I've got two secret projects that'll uh, have me shooting straight and uh, getting slime, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Could you be just a little more subtle, just a tiny bit? Where's the fun in that, now? I, I I actually only got one of those references. Really? I got both of them, unfortunately. <laughs> I got two out of three, but I. I Anyway, to be you want to close this out, Amon? Yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter at AmonDuelUS. Duel has two U's in it, uh, where I talk about music and movies. Uh, I can give you recommendations on horror movies. If you're enjoying this, try Shaun of the Dead or Return of the Living Dead, which are both very funny. Uh, and I also have songs. I have songs. So. Oh, yes. Well, obviously, this is about singing zombies, so I felt like you could go in a few directions with this. Uh, there's, as far as actual real-life versions of this, your closest would probably be somebody like Baby Metal, who, I can't, I'm not really that familiar with Baby Metal, I can't recommend anything specifically, but, like, go on YouTube, you're, you're adults, you know how to, like, search for music. <laughs> Can I add to some suggestions real quick? Oh, go ahead, yeah. Because of the Shamisen episode 2, I recommend Benita Applebub by A Tribe Called Quest. That's a good one. Good choice. And, and because it's kind of odd to those with the show... Killing them softly by the Fuji's. Also a good choice. <laughs> I like it. Soft. Wow, that's really on the nose. <laughs> um, other 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 bands you might enjoy. There is of course '60s band the Zombies, who are don't. There's nothing really zombies about them. They're just a bunch of nerds from England, but they're really good. <laughs> what you're saying <laughs> that they're, they're actually zombie? That is just false advertising. <laughs> what can I say? Um. And, of course, um, uh, I feel, I don't know, the most obvious one in the world, of course, would be Living Dead Girl by Rob Zombie, because, I mean, look, look at all the words in that sentence. Only one of them isn't appropriate, and that's the word Rob. Um, oh, and before I forget, I should note that this is this is not the first time J- Japan has blessed us with a musical involving zombies. If you like weird shit, you should go watch the movie The Happiness of the Katakuras, about a nice little family running an inn out in the countryside and all of their uh, guests keep dying by accident and they keep burying them out in the woods because they don't think the uh, police will believe them. And it's also a musical and the zombies definitely get danced in one of the musical numbers. It's very strange and I highly recommend you go watch it immediately. I love musical Shiki! <laughs> Thr- thriller I mean, 2, wrong. Electric Boogaloo. You're not wrong. No, it's Thriller 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <coughs> Couldn't say it better myself. I don't think there are any musicals left to reference in this episode. Congratulations, team. We did it! We won! <laughs> we unlocked the... Re- the, the uh, it was like a anything. Well, I guess if we're gonna end this episode, I'm going home. I'm coming home. Home. That's not. I did reference a musical, no, and no, nobody I've got seen it. No, no, Rocky Horror. I, I'm, I'm good. I, I thought you were referencing. Has anybody Diddy. seen my pet cat, Fifi? Oh shit, that might be too soon. <laughs> anyway, close us out, Amon. Please, right. please put us out thank of our you, misery. Thank you, thank you for listening, guys. I know it's been a long episode, but we appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Good night, nerds. Aloha, and remember, if you if you die, if you die. It's okay, you can come back as a zombie, and you will have a popular franchise all for yourself. You can cut this out, but remember kids, the home of happiness isn't in Janet's hat, it's in her twat. <laughs> that's, okay, that's it. <laughs> Good night. Keep it dirty. Have fun at Keep Disney, it Megan. <laughs> Keep it dirty. Keep it dirty.